fuck? There you go. <laughs> there is a that is exactly the joke I was making. Was that the word I chose the word suck because it rhymes with something else. That's what I said. I hit the the thing and then it didn't. Unmute fuck. <laughs> yeah. I got the funniest email. I go live, as you do, and I sit here, and then I got this email that says, Your stats for your stream on 714. It's 713. Streamlabs? I don't even use Streamlabs. Stream length, one minute. It's Streamlabs, there's something wrong here. I don't even use your service anymore because you're plagiarizers. But why did I get this email? For a stream tomorrow? I hope my stream doesn't last a minute. Which reminds me, I need to go delete the VOD from yesterday that was five minutes of me not having audio. Thank you, all you wonderful, delightful people who sat around and waited for me to get through that shit show. I tried to mute something and it didn't work. I tried muting the entirety of uh, muting the entirety of OBS. That, uh, that apparently mutes all audio to go to OBS and not audio coming from OBS. It's like, great, cool, I'm just trying to mute the Wii people so you don't hear, Hello? Huh? What's up? <laughs> anyway, hi, it's me, just the little guy, hanging out, cruising, exploring, enjoying a day, as best that I can. Hope that you're all enjoying your days. Doing all the things that you people do. For example, going for a hike, or scrolling Twitter, or eating a sandwich, or I don't even know what I did today. Either way, there's so many wonderful things. I hope that you did one thing today that made you smile. I played Fall Guys for a little bit, didn't win a crown. So yeah. Anyway. I've been thinking about uh, Raptor Boyfriend. We've been working so hard to get this kiss. I want to do... I want to do... A prediction. We're gonna do a prediction, kids. Start a prediction. Oh gosh. I'm gonna do this in a different window, because I can't see that. Okay. Where's the button? Start a prediction, please. Alright. Oh, the last one we did was, uh, well, I beat that dungeon in an hour. Thank you! Alright, this prediction will be... Will we get to kiss Bigfoot tonight? Yes or no? This one's for the slow burn people. We're gonna have it run for 20 minutes. Starting prediction now. I sure hope that we get to kiss him today. If we can't, I'm gonna scream. Because this sure is one slow burn romance. Like, probably the slowest burn romance? I don't know. Either way. Vote with your bagels. Vote multiple times. The last time I did a prediction on someone's stream, I was the only person who voted no. 
And I won 24,000 channel points. <laughs> so yeah, being in opposition or putting your all in might turn out in your favor. Another thing about, uh, about this game is that I haven't actually shaved my beard since I started playing this game. <laughs> I'm getting that into it. I, I thought this would be a funny idea, but I would have to know how many episodes of a game I stream something, but how funny it would be to, like, slowly change my appearance over the course of each stream so that when you, like, frame by frame, I slowly transform into something. But then I was like, that's too much planning on my part. But I thought it would be funny. Each stream I look more and more like a Bigfoot. So, like, my beard's getting absolutely unruly because I haven't shaved since I started playing this game. I thought it would be hilarious if I just grabbed the razor in the middle of the stream and just... <laughs> that's too messy. But it's just an intrusive thought I had today. It's like, I gotta try this one. So, hopefully we get those kissies. I need those kissies. On top of that, let's see what else I've done today. I managed to get, um, Sith to try my favorite flavor of boobly. We're still waiting for them. We're still waiting for them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Snapchat them right now. Hey, Twitch wants to know something. Did you enjoy that boobly flavor? I need, I need everyone to know. I need them, I need to know. I need to know. I'm out here trying to get people to enjoy the sweet, delicious taste of boobly. And it will happen. The whole world will enjoy it. Anyway. We're starting the game early, because I'm pretty, pretty motivated to get my kisses in. Alright. Oh, I didn't unmute the audio, my bad. <laughs> okay. There we go! I'm a professional streamer, I have audio issues. Okay. So last week, we left off. For one thing, I got dysphoria. I feel like I'm still trying to get over my dysphoria because this character is way too much like I was in high school. So, I ate my, my dysphoria, uh, removing... What the fuck is that? Oh. I ate my dysphoria reducing, um, pretzels to, to feel better. So we talked about that, and then that gave me the courage to actually go and finish the game. So we went on a sleepover party with our friend Day, the fairy, and Day the Fae, if you will, and found out that clam juice and... Is it clam juice? Yeah. Clam juice and ginger ale does not make a very good, uh, does not make a very good cocktail. We got drunk anyway off of our clam juice ginger ale cocktail. <laughs> Chaos kitchen ideas. So we did that. Then we were prank calling. We prank called a cereal company, which got me hooting and hollering. And then we ended up uh, prank calling our crush, Taylor Talto. And admitted to him that we are a skeleton and we want to bone. <laughs> oh, you know what? I didn't fix this. I... 800. I was like, this looks funny. It looks funny to me, not to you. Hello, Finn. How are you? I'm trying to adjust this, because I didn't change it from Chaos Kitchen. I'm just catching everybody up to speed. Enter the prediction that we got going on over there to see who, uh, to see if you're voting for me getting kisses this week. I want kisses! I need kisses! 
But I'm catching everybody up to speed. So we got our sleepover. We we prank called our mans and told him that we're a skeleton and we're one a bone. He also shares the same sentiment that we like him. So this week has to be the one. Has to be the one. This is the Friday the 13th episode. So since that sleepover, time seemed to fly by. Before I knew it, it was the end of fall. Maybe Ladle does that to you. It is a weird and wonderful place. It felt like it had to put a spell on it. On all of us. I mean, there I was thinking about which hot person I wanted to kiss the most. It's Bigfoot. <laughs> and this wasn't some fantasy or something. It felt like I had an actual chance with Taylor. He's like, girl, we know. Yeah, I know, it's hard to imagine me having that kind of confidence. Especially at the same time, but I did. Okay, you got me. I was kind of freaking out. This reminds me... Okay, because because Western culture just hypes up romance so much in media. It kind of reminds me of the fact that... I was so anxious about my first kiss. Like, so anxious. Like, I thought I was going to explode. And my first kiss had to be part of a theater performance. So I was like, okay. But my crush was my, my partner in the scene. And they also had a crush on me. And I had to be the one initiated in the scene. So I had to be the one to initiate it in total. And like we did like fake ones. But we, at some point before the main performance, we had to do a real one. I was just like, <gasps> my days are numbered. So I just went in one day and did it. And I was so anxious after the scene was over that I went to the back of the theater and uh, threw up. So <laughs> Also, Nana, I just noticed the configuration of emojis you did makes it look like Cashew's playing football. <laughs> That's actually really funny. I didn't know Cashew was a football player. I was kind of freaking out. I just didn't want to blow it. I wanted to get my smooch, damn it! <laughs> now I just want to like look at emotes and see what ways I can configure Cashew. Which, by the way, Finn, as you don't have a sub, we now have new follower emotes if you want. <gasps> There's Fall Guys global emotes? <gasps> yeah. Oh, I love that. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I want to get my smooch, damn it. And I wanted it soon. So you know me. I made another plan. Well, thank you. I will hydrate with my gay... My gay straw. I mean, yeah, that too. He's very tall. He's like, I don't know, 10 feet tall. It's, I don't have to have him sit down or anything. <laughs> I want to figure out my approach for being a sex icon, you know. You know, when the moment came, I wanted to be prepared to know how I should act. Yes, they were. If you click the emotes, it will show uh, art, the artist uh, underneath. It'll say, follower emote, the Bobo Boy artist, and a Bobo567. I said, I'll, I'll, if you make, if you make two emotes today, then you get, I'll buy you the new Sims, uh, thing. So they did, they made the new Sims. Hello, Asabardo or Akbar, dear friend, how are you today? I hope that you're having a good one. We're trying to kiss Bigfoot today. Akbar. <laughs> yes. I love when Finn's just like, hi, Akbar. It's so cute. He's always so excited to see you. It's the cutest thing. So Finn really likes you. Finn thinks you're cool. <laughs> I'm sure you already know that, so... I don't know how to act. I don't know how I should act. After some thought, we're trying to plan on getting a kiss today. It's finally happening. We're getting a kiss today. After some thought, I felt like being... Are we gonna be bold? Are we gonna be coy? Or are we gonna be genuine? 
getting some work done. How are you? I'm feeling okay. Get to meet them IRL soon. No way. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you. I can't wait to see you again. Can we also kiss Mothman or is it just Bigfoot? Uh, we can kiss a Velociraptor and we can kiss a fairy. I wish we could kiss Mothman. Maybe when this is done, we can draw our own Bigfoot. I mean, our own Mothman. Like, I will draw what Mothman would look like if he was in this game. However, I could contact the Twitter and be like, Mothman DLC when? We still have very good options, yes. I'm thinking... Trying to be bold did not work well because we're awkward. Being coy, we're not good at lying. Yeah, the Bulbasaur heart is new as well. Yes, a DLC. Mm -hmm. We need it. Um, I think being genuine at this point, honestly. I don't know what you guys think, but our character is awkward as fuck. The being coy and being bold will not work. Clearly, he likes us for us, so... I know you've done some Mothman drawings. I'm here to answer your question. Tell me. I need to know. What is your consensus? What is your verdict? ASMR Sith. Sith. <laughs> pod chicken. I'm obsessed. I have the pod chicken on a sticky note on my desk. That's where it came from. It's definitely the best one I've tried so far, but I'm still gonna use the static TV water. Not gonna lie. After drinking some, like, Mountain Dew for that stream for Chaos Kitchen, and then drinking boobly lime afterwards? Get out of my ears. <laughs> I did that to my therapist once. I was just like, I know this is my last can. I need to buy some after work tomorrow. No, one time I was, like, talking to my therapist after I got my new microphone, and I was just like... You know, sometimes I can talk about my trauma like this. And then other times, I can tell you about my trauma this way. <laughs> and he was just like, I fucking hate you. Are you all hopped up in Mountain Dew? I swear, after Chaos Kitchen was over, I did not want to eat anything. I didn't want to eat anything. I was just like... I have too much sugar in my body. And Nana was like... Static. They they drank too much and ate too much sugar and Mountain Dew. I was like, you're all over the place, buddy. You drank like, you consumed basically like three bottles of Mountain Dew. <laughs> Trauma ASMR style. You'll never guess what she said to me. <laughs> I'll tell you this little story about my mother. <laughs> Anyway, I felt like being genuine was my best strategy for keeping my cool. Because I can't act. With my trusty plan in my back pocket, I was like... Like I said. Off of it. You should be getting the cookies tomorrow. I will try them on stream. Just for you. We will be. I still have the buttercream in the... I'll st I still have the buttercream in the fridge. So we'll put the buttercream on the cookies. Eat them. And then get 17 crowns in Fall Guys. Okay, fine. I didn't believe that I was the kind of person that good things happen to. Still, I believe that. I still believe this. <laughs> I started to worry that something bad would happen. I felt that fear following me around like a deranged stalker. Once again, yes, this character is me. <laughs> Except I call my, my fear Knife Man. One of the reasons I'm scared of crowds is I'm scared that Knife Man is there. <laughs> I started wondering if the wonderful magic of Ladle had a flip side effect. That the town held a dark and deadly secret. I started to wonder if the legend of Ladle of the Ladle Ripper was real. The legend of the Ladle Ripper is definitely real. Uh-huh. Really, Robert? Think about it. 
There's something here in this town that makes it safe for people like us. Florentines? No, like, you know, what's the word? Cryptids? Right, Crypt Keepers! Special creatures that most people don't believe in. Fairies, ghosts, Bigfoots, dinosaurs. That last one doesn't really fit. People believe in dinosaurs. Most people, anyway. Yeah, most people. There are people out there who don't believe in dinosaurs. There's something special about this town. Why else did we all end up here? What drew us to this place? There's nothing special about this town except for how boring it is. It's so far from everything that there's like zero chance anyone is going to come in and freak out on us. So what? That's it. We all came here because it's secluded. You keep saying we came here, but I was born here. My mom was born here too, so... It's not like I'm drawn to Lidl or something. I hope this is the episode we also figure out what happened with it, with Ingrid. I need to know. <laughs> For those who don't know, Ingrid is Dave's best friend who's a ghost. And they're kind of off and on dating. So I feel like if we took the day option... We would be in a polycule, which I think a polycule would be the best answer to this whole story anyway. All dating sims need a polyamory option. It's not like I'm drawn to Layla or something. Basically, it's the opposite. Okay, I don't buy the whole cryptids live in Layla because it's a bit of a off-the-beaten-path theory. A bit? There are plenty of towns that are just as hard to, to get to, but... You don't see them with their own swamp monster. He just prefers to be called Gilman. <laughs> right. Caption said that we could make a molecule and I'm here for it. <laughs> what kind of molecule we're making? We can make water. Easy. I just made a molecule. I'm a day though. You are? Yeah, I mean, it's not just that, it's isolated. I think there's also a domino effect. Like, once a few families of cryptids moved here, they tell their other cryptid friends about it, and then they tell theirs, and so on. Nah, too simple. It's exactly what happened with your family, Robert. Not exactly. So I like this little sweater khaki moment. Like, I think this is the first time we've had a, a change in clothes in the characters, now that it's fall. Like, we're no longer wearing our, uh, little, uh, little overall moment. She's no longer wearing that cute pink sweater. Now he's all, all khakied up. And our man's is wearing this nice sweater instead of just a plain shirt with a little hole in it. Oh, come on, you know they moved here so that you could actually go to high school instead of being homeschooled. What? No, they just had some financial difficulties, so they had to move to their summer home. Yeah, they could have moved anywhere and they chose us here. Or you. Yeah, right, sure. Okay, we could ask him what were the financial difficulties, he used to come here for the summers, or where did you live before? Which makes me wonder, where did he live before seems like a really good question to ask. Because he said earlier that the Raptorson family has been in this area for decades, or longer than decades, for centuries. So it's like, is he lying? And I'm very sure he told us that the Raptorsons are one of the richest people and richest families in town. So I doubt it's financial difficulties. And everybody came here in the summer. There's a summer camp. So... I don't know. Hmm. I wonder what you guys think. It's a lot of fact finding. Question, yeah, we need to question his insecurity. 
he's definitely hiding something. There's a reason why I didn't go for him. He's a fuckboy. The titular raptor of the raptor boyfriend game is a fuckboy. Then eat something! My god, please eat something. Do you need me to send you something? Anyway. Ba, 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 ba. I ate French bread pizza, but I'm a growing boy. You are a drinking... You are a growing boy. Nana, drink water. Yay! Alright. Anywho. Hmm. I'm not sure which one would uh, undermine his insecurity the most. Pizza sounds great. Yeah, dude, I would love some pizza. I still haven't finished my calzone in the fridge. Um, let's ask him about his financial difficulties. What were the financial difficulties? My parents made some bad investments. Yeah, you're able to bet. Oh, it just ended. Finances are always a rough patch, you're right. I don't blame them. Betamax and Laserdisc are superior formats to VHS. All right, this takes place in the 90s. For sure. So wait. The parents didn't feel the pull from the ancient magical water of the lake. The water that comes up from the depths beneath the gorge. Uh. I've heard that nobody's been able to reach the bottom of the deepest point in the lake. Yeah, Finn, you jinxed it. You're like, can I bet more? And then it ends. <laughs> Dude, my, my piano teacher had laser discs. I've heard that nobody's been able to reach the bo the bottom of the deepest point in the world. I mean, yeah, it's probably like super deep. Anyway. Some people say it goes 2,000 leagues down. That's super deep. Is that why your family came here, Taylor? Uh, Emily? Yeah, your parents. No, I was joking. Jay and Jessica are right. Crippins come here because they can. Plain and simple. Maybe it's because it's quiet. Maybe because they can be social. Maybe they know people here. Come on, forget about that nonsense and think rationally. For once. It's obvious, they lines. What? Come oh again? <sighs> ley lines! Lines of magical energy that crisscross the globe. Connecting the ancient sites of worship and natural monuments of old spiritual beliefs. Right. That was very specific. Where these lines intersect into hubs or networks, an energy portal or a place of power is created by crossing the mystical energies, called a nexus point. Where is this coming from? He has like a book full of this shit. I have a, I have a co-worker who talks like this. <laughs> They're always saying shit. It turns out he's a nerd too, yeah. He's a nerd and a fuckboy. Oh, I forgot we got a make yes last week. <laughs> we, we, he was out skinny dipping and we tried to steal his clothes, but we weren't fast enough. And he saw us stealing his clothes and we dropped his clothes in the mud. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oof. That was a really scandalous episode. We almost kissed. We almost kissed Day. We <laughs> we saw him Reiki. We confessed our love. It's getting hot in here. The most famous of these nexus points is Stonehenge. And a series of VHS tapes. He got them off a late night infomercial. You wanna know where another nexus point is located? It's late, alright. Exactly. It would take a couple hundred miles. <laughs> sure. 
So this nexus point might be drawing all the cryptids to Ladle through special energy channels. That's exactly right. I'm skeptical. I don't know about all this. Why haven't I heard of this before? The government or the powers that be or whatever don't want us to know about it. Top secret experiments have been done in the woods here. Hi, Cashew. Do you want to hang out? Do you want to say hi? You're just going to chew your leg. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come say hi to everybody. Come say hi to everybody. Or just lie there on the floor. Yeah, for real. Nah, he's just going to lie on the floor. He doesn't want to hang out with us. Come on, Cashew. Say hi. I quite want to see you. Yeah! Because <laughs> he's a jock. You like jocks. How you doing, buddy? You having a good day? <laughs> he smacked his tail on the desk. You're not having a good day. This is Cashew. He's a little criminal. He's having a bad day, apparently. <laughs> Bye, Cashew! He's gonna go he's gonna go play with the fidget spinner now. <laughs> he he likes fidget spinners. Top secret experiments have been done in the woods here. But the national forestry is keeping the findings of those experiments from us, mere townsfolk, and the world. Akbar says that they love you. He's licking himself. Wow, <laughs> oh, this one goes deep, huh? Think about it. Why doesn't the rest of the world know about us? Then? Again, isolation. No one comes to live. Yeah, you ever thought about how convenient that is? If all that's true, that'd be pretty wild. I guess I never know who to trust. Anyway, what does this all have to do with the ladle with the ladle ripper? During certain times of the year, the next point becomes a conduit for the dark energies of the world. The ancient people understood this and performed rituals to cleanse the nexus points. But in these modern times, we've turned our back on those beliefs. So the dark energy has been building up for like, hundreds of years. But on one special night, that dark energy can manifest in physical form. That night is tonight. Uh-huh. Friday the 13th, right? I forgot it's Friday the 13th. Kind of stopped having any meaning after I turned 12. Three years ago, Randy Shaw died mysteriously in the woods near town. The police found his corpse impaled on a tree branch. His killer was never found. They also found his ATV a few feet away in an empty case of beer. I'm pretty sure his killer was the tree and your responsibility. In 1979, they found Farmer Greg cut into a million pieces, his innards painting his cornfield red. Yeah, right. Next to his busted combine harvester, which was also covered in blood. Yeah, Tree had it out for him. <laughs> it's like that episode of Bob's Burgers, where Tina's learning to drive, and it's an empty parking lot, and she panics and smashes right into the telephone pole, even though she's going like two miles an hour. This shit's funny. Sounds like an accident. That's what they want you to believe! Who's they? Every single non-binary person on this planet who uses that pronoun. The police. The government. Yeah, Nana, exactly. That's the joke I was going for. I don't know if you're still playing werewolves or not, so... You know, shady people, FTP, fuck the police. <sighs> right. The Mounties helped cover up a murder of a corn farmer in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, why would they do that? To hide the real killer. I haven't been thinking- I mean, I haven't been playing, I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> it makes me laugh, because that's how you were with Sea of Thieves, too. You're just like... I'm just thinking about pirates. It's so cute. 
to hide the real killer. Matt, the ladle ripper. Ah. Oh boy. Is there tinfoil under your hat, Robert? And there was the bootleg massacre. Four dead bodies found in 1922. If only I had more people to play Sea of Thieves with. Cough, sip, cough. <laughs> we made some friends yesterday who play it. You can join them. If I can get, you know, more than an i3, I'll play with you. I can't stream it, but I don't think our I don't think Spectrum Internet would like that. You would have to upgrade to the hundred dollar package, probably. And then the hacking of Gary Roberts back in 1901. See how they're all connected? Wait. 1901. They would make the Ladle Ripper like over 90 years old. The little passes impaling bodies on trees days. Haven't you guys been paying attention? To what? The Leyline Nexus. The murders. Friday the 13th. The Ladle Ripper isn't a person. Well... Not really, he possesses people. The little Ripper is a demon from the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension is time, Robert. That explains why he's in world. No, it's the measure of time. It's not the place where demons live. Fine, then he's from hell or whatever, but he's real. Okay, let's go deep. Could the ley lines be portals to other realms? Go on. <laughs> no, you too. Like, maybe there are like infinity dimensions with infinity versions of us. Yes. Each one a little different. Yes, that's 100% backed by science. And in one of these dimensions, like, everyone is like a murder hungry demon. And so the Ripper just like traveled from that place. I knew you'd get it. This conversation their entire lunch? Is this after school? How do they have so much time? The funny thing is, I thought this question. Because, like, there's been other moments where we have a conversation in the hallway, and I'll be listening to the background noise. Like, that gentle music. And sometimes you hear a school bell ring, and I'm just like, we're late for class. And we'll hear another one and be like, well, there goes fifth period. <laughs> this is absolutely the kind of thing my friends and I would talk about during lunch. Yeah. I want to say it's after school. I knew you'd get it. Ugh. Every version of me thinks this is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, my anxiety. There's the bell! Come on, we're gonna miss English class. <laughs> we're reading Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> Are we seriously going to breeze past the fact that the Little Ripper has a first name and it's just Matt? Most people just go with the Little Ripper and leave out the Matt. I wonder why. Would I like to be accurate? Hey everyone, what's with all the awkward pauses? I don't know, I think we were written that way. The timing just seems off. Yeah, like, something's missing. Shouldn't Ingrid have popped out nowhere and said something like, every freaking day is like Friday the 13th to me by now? That's what it is. The distinct lack of ghost energy. Yeah, the bell rang, that's why. Duh. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't been around much lately. Good. Whoa, Jess. What? She doesn't bother any of you? Well... Kind of. She scares me. I think I piss her off. Because I tried to get with her girl. <laughs> Don't be scared of her. She's harmless. But she has ghost powers. Right, but she's not even that good at using them. Yeah, but give her time. You people are ghost racist. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a ghost racist. I need to know. I mean, she's only been a ghost for, like, what, a year? Jess. I mean, um, let's talk about something else. Everyone's coming to my place tonight, right? 
for Friday the 13th. A party? No. <laughs> We've been through this. It's not going to be a party. We can still make it fun. I've got a mini keg courtesy of Brandon. Hell yeah. Still, are you in? A mini keg for Friday the 13th seems a bit excessive. I'm not taking no for an answer, because I'm a coercive fuckboy. Well, as long as it's not homebrew, sure. Right, no promises. What about you, Jess? Yes, I'll be there. Really? Awesome. You know, fun times, Jessica. Gonna be fun. She doesn't look fun. Okay, round seven then. I just want to say something, you know? Serious. I really like you guys. So if anyone finds themselves writing on walls or speaking in tongues or seeing strange... Whatever. See you guys at 7. Yeah, bye. The Ripper's real, guys! Aliens! Aliens! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Even though I pretended to like it. Even though I pretended like it didn't. Robert's story about the Little Ripper kind of spooked me. TBH, that would happen to me too. <laughs> oh, I believe in this kind of stuff. <laughs> Not like ley lines. This shit doesn't make sense to me, but like ghosts. I totally believe in ghosts. Um, I never mentioned this on stream before, but when I was 16, my parents took me to a Bigfoot convention. <laughs> You can see my hair in the crowd on an episode of Finding Bigfoot, where the Finding Bigfoot crew came into Vermont. You can look in the audience, I'm in the second row, and you see I had curled my hair for that day, so I had like a nice little swoosh going on, and I wore a bow tie because I was trying to look like the most geeky little lesbian there. <laughs> you love that for me? It was kind of awkward, but like, my mom had a sighting, and then, like, my parents, we lived by, by this, like, uh, this protected forest, and often we would drive out at, like, 11 p.m., and Dad would start howling. <laughs> Living near Gettysburg really makes you believe in ghosts. Yes. Key lines are just the magic version of the places where TikTok plates meet. Yeah, that too. Man, hearing your own dad, Lee Lyons, yes, thank you. Uh, hearing your own dad do a Bigfoot call is fucking weird. I seem to believe that 80% of ghosts are just drunk people in the distance. <laughs> that too. I've always wanted to, um, I've always wanted to, uh, do, uh, stream with the, with the Echo Vox. But I don't know, I don't want to pay $24. Yeah, my parents are kind of a kind of a good time. They can be, <laughs> but like my parents are huge into like conspiracy shit. And like one time, I came home for uh, I came home for Christmas break, and usually our Christmas tradition is we all get rip roaring high. So. You know, I'm hitting my vape pen because I brought my pen with me because I was like, ah, it's COVID times. I don't want to share the bond and get my mom sick. Right? Nana is fucking cool. I keep trying to... Don't speak, I'm not... No, you're cool. Okay, shut up. I'll fight you. I always get the story wrong, but I, I swear Nana ate a, a haunted hot dog. <laughs> or something. Or like, they ate a ghost while eating a hot dog or something. Or a ghost passed through them while they're eating a hot dog. I don't... I get the story wrong every single time. <laughs> They're furiously typing in the other room. I mean, I, I did eat hot dog. I have eaten hot dogs in Gettysburg. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the run fair. We need to take a stop in Gettysburg for a hot dog. 
<laughs> Along Main Street, which is where many people died. <laughs> I just love how furiously I just hear clacking in the other room. I've never experienced paranormal activity in the hot dog shop. <laughs> I'm sweating from laughing. <laughs> what if somebody died in the hot dog shop? There are hot dogs that are very good. <laughs> Okay, then tell us a story about the ghosts that you met. <laughs> never, never eaten a haunted hot dog. <laughs> Finn, you eat a lot of hot dogs. You're about to get. You're about to get. What's the word? What's the word I'm thinking of? Died in the hot dog shop while eating a hot dog on National Hot Dog Day. Like that episode of Hey Arnold. What's that kid's name? Um. Oh shit. Hey Arnold characters. What's his name? Eugene! One time, there's an episode where Arnold takes Eugene out for a fun day for pity's sake, and Eugene chokes on a hot dog, and Arnold saves him with the Heimlich maneuver. That shit's ingrained in me as a kid. <clears throat> anyway, Finn, you're about to get absolutely spooked. By the sheer number of hot dogs you're gonna eat. Hello, Jamie! You missed Nana getting mad at me for uh, ranting about the time that I thought that they ate a haunted hot dog. <laughs> yeah, an absolute throwback. I am absolutely just sweating into this eye. There's a reason why I had the, the light... I had the light off last week. I feel like the light's just getting brighter. I did not eat a haunted hot dog. <laughs> Jamie, I'm waiting. I eat hot dogs, Jamie. Yes. You used to live near, you used to live near Gettysburg. And visit Gettysburg often for ghost, ghost tours. My favorite hot dog is Battlefield Fries on Main Street. <laughs> It's piss off Nana Day, apparently. <laughs> you know that when Nana dies, there'll be a poultry ghost? A, a, a poultry geist. <laughs> I'm gonna flex that tier 3 emote that I'm the only one can use. Poultry ghost. Po po poultry geist. Famous hot wiener! I want to eat at famous hot wiener! Nana, can we eat at famous hot wiener? I used to live in Hanover, the location of where the original famous hot wiener. We gotta go eat at hot wiener! <laughs> when we go to the Ren Fair, can we go to hot wiener? Poltergeist is 100%. I know it's a movie. I saw I saw the advertisement for it on um, Funniest Home Videos. I guess we can go to one of them. Because last time we went to last time we went to the Ren Fair, we had a big pizza the night before. Your mom, your mommy bought us pizza. We're never gonna make your mommy buy us hot dogs. The only reason Adam, Nan. I almost said the only reason Adam is so nanamently. <laughs> the only reason Nana is so adamantly denying it was a haunted hot dog is because when they ate it, the ghost transferred to possessing Nana and not the hot dog. <gasps> is Texas Hot Wiener or Famous Hot Wiener the better one? I need to take a picture in front of a sign that says Hot Wiener. Famous Hot Wiener. How come you didn't tell me about Famous Hot Wiener? <laughs> I feel like you got pissy at me during the Weird Al Chaos Kitchen and I made the the wieners. This is this a hot dog shop? Dude, I fucking love hot dogs. 
Ever since Finn got uh, Dear Finnegan got so obsessed with hot dogs, I have been non-stop thinking about eating hot dogs. Because he's an influencer. He influences people to do things. Much how, like, I influence people to drink poobly. Finn influences my body to be constantly craving hot dogs. Yesterday, or, or Monday, when we couldn't decide what to eat, I almost got hot dogs. You ended up getting hot dogs, and I was like, damn, I could have gotten hot dogs. But I didn't want to get hot dogs, so I didn't want to eat hot dogs too many times in a row. But I've been non-stop thinking about getting... Just stopping? On my way home from work? Grabbing a foot long? Boobly. Yeah, I call it boobly. Because it's, it's, it's Michael Buble. He's right there on the wall. Michael Buble. Boobly. <laughs> it's boobly. I need to ask the Twitter account if it's actually bubbly. But my friend Rai and their girlfriend Sab were in the product, were product testers for the brand. And it just came to them as a can that said Bub. So it used to be called just Bub. So it could just be Bubbly. Either way, I like pronouncing it Boobly because of that man right there on my wall behind me. Above my big, ma big mouth Billy Bat. Because I never got my Billy Baths. We need to go to, uh... What's that store? I want to say Texas Supply Chain, but that is definitely not it. Nana, what's that store? Across from the Harbor Freight. Not Texas Supply Chain. <laughs> what store? The one across from Harbor Freight. Tractor Supply Co. Yeah, we need to go to we need to go to Tractor Supply Co. and see if they have the big mouth Billy Bass. I need it. I need it. I'm gonna call them. We'll be like, "Hi, do you have any of those talking fish?" <laughs> We've never been there. They also have like build your own cucumber. They might have chicks. <gasps> we can go kiss a chick. Don't kiss a chick. You'll get poultry flu. We can we can wave hi to the chicks and buy a Carhartt jacket. Does that make me a sinfluencer? Yes. Anyway. Now that we have that, that story over, Nana did not eat a haunted hot dog, but I do want to know about a time that they've seen a ghost. Feel free to respond at your own leisure. Robert's story about the Little Ripper kind of spooked me. So that day, after school, I was just looking for a show to help me relax and unwind. This year, in honor of Friday the 13th, LLN brings you a monstrous marathon of scary movies and murder mysteries. I always check my messages. Message one. Hey Stella, sweetie, it's Dad. Just want to call and see if you're game for some daddy-daughter movie night this weekend. I'll be home later tonight, so maybe tomorrow? Anyway, love you. Message two. Hey, Stella. It's me, Taylor. Obviously. You probably figured that out. I've never seen a definite full apparition, but I've definitely had doors open, things fall with no wind, and weird cold spots plenty of times. We- I forgot about that too! We had ghost hunters come to the house I grew up in. So I used to grow up in this house. It was built pre-Civil War. It's an old-ass house. Like, super old. This is before my dad lost his job and we had to move to a duplex in another town. Yeah. Hi, Mix and Match! There's one particular place called Devil's Den. Yes. We had- my mom hired ghost hunters to come to our house. Not the TV show ghost hunters. They were like amateur ghost hunters. But like I said, we were on- You can't see me in the crowd for- for the, um- for, for the Finding Bigfoot episode. Because yes, Mix and Match, I mentioned earlier that my parents took me to an episode of Finding Bigfoot live recording back when we lived in Vermont when I was 16. And I showed up looking like the butchiest lesbian. <laughs> Why are we so cool? I don't know. I'm just a sweaty little nerd on the internet. These enormous stones that are very much haunted. Okay, okay. 
Yo, let's take me to Devil's Den. That sounds really cool, actually. We'll go when the veil is thin. So anyway, um, we have these ghost hunters come, and they actually captured on photo an orb. It was like a basketball-sized blue orb floating through our living room. And one time we were all sitting around the TV, and we had one of those cat toys that's like the spring with the ball on the end, and the cat like bounces it back and forth. And we watched the ball just like be held against the ground, and it's on a spring. So there's no way it can like rest there. It's always just kind of bouncing and never touches the ground. But the ball was touching the ground and we watched it randomly spring up. It was super weird. So like this ghost would love to play with the cat toys. And I saw like this cat shaped apparition disappear into the wall and I was like, what the fuck? So, so the devil's den, enormous stones that are much haunted. They are chilly even on the hottest days. Yeah, dude, I swear we got a ghost cat. Like, it was critical to my childhood seeing that ghost cat. Just saying. One time, my brother was walking up the stairs with a box of cookies, and he felt this force just knock them out of his hands. It was super weird. I did meet John Zaffis that one time. You guys know John Zaffis? The Haunted Collector? He's really cool. Um, he did a ghost thing at my college campus. Uh, he brought his Echo Vox into our school chapel. And yeah, he's super cool. He uh, played with the Echo Vox and he had this. Uh, he was like asking questions about the ghosts. He was like, okay, ghosts, like, what do you what do you see around you? And they started listing off colors because they're stained glass windows. They were like, what do we look like? And they're like, purple, 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 which purple was the school colors. And everyone was wearing like purple hoodies and stuff and then they're like yellow blue i was like oh windows and then this one person was like this one this one ghost was like said a name i, I think it was like maria or something and then we looked at one of the windows and one of the windows was like this scene because all the stained glass windows were scenes that of like traditions of the school and we like tried to figure out one of the spirits there in the chapel was one of the names of the dedicated windows like window dedicated to class of such and such especially so and so and so their name was there and then we're like are you in this this vignette and they were like yes and then we were like pointing at the figures and we pointed to to them and it was really cool. So that was really neat. I forgot about that. I have a picture with him somewhere, but it's like pre-transition, so you ain't seeing it. But he's mad cool. I had fun with John's office. My mind was fucking blown. I really want to do an Echo Vox stream. <laughs> That's dangerous, though. I wanted to go to the Binghamton Asylum and do it, but they have cops, like, swarming that place 24-7. I would not want to get stuck on my college campus as a ghost. Yeah, me neither. We tried to do it in Tompkins Hall, uh, which was the haunted dorm. Some girl died in the bathtub. But, like, they, 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 would for they forbid us from doing that there. They're like, no, you have to do it. You have to do it in Cole's Hall. I was like, damn, okay. I almost bought the app and did it myself. Which would be really cool to be like, please, maybe we have permission to do this. I doubt they would. They, because my college banned Pokemon Go raids. Because I didn't want strangers on the campus. I'm like, okay, they would definitely ban uh, Ghost Hunters. So. Now my ghost stories are over. Because of the sound of my voice, this is awkward. I hate answering machines. Me too. Just called to see if you're home. I always miss you, so you just wait a little longer before calling. Okay, this is probably annoying. Call me if you want. Or not. Oh, he's so cute. Hey, Stella. I just gotta tell someone. I'm really sick of this whole Ripper thing. Yeah, it's hot dog time, buddy. 
My school banned phones during recess, still in effect to this day, because somebody invaded a classroom while it was being taught to catch a Pikachu. Oh my god! That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Damn, like, me and Nana were shocked when they still banned Pokemon cards. Now they're banning phones strictly for Pokemon Go. Can you imagine being that dumb? That's funny, though. I'm really sick of this whole Ripper thing. I just want to have a conversation with someone that doesn't feel like it's for nine-year-olds. So call me. Four. Stella, I did it. I went to the bathroom. Turn out the lights. You have a ghost cat? Yeah, you have Casper. Casper the friendly ghost cat. Well, luckily, Mix and Match, you're almost out of school, so... I looked in the mirror and I said the Ripper's name three times. Well, no one knows their identity, so I just said, Matt the Little Ripper, three times. <laughs> I'm just thinking about doing that IRL. <laughs> like, how many Matts do I know? You have a ghost dog named Pearl. Wait, is there a famous ghost named Pearl? I may have summoned a demon to this world. I'm sorry. Call me? No. Okay. Taylor, what's up? <laughs> Taylor? Pearl's the gr girl ghost. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I never. I think I watched it, but I forgot. Um, Taylor? Noah? I always thought that Casper looked like Richie Rich. It's like he died rich. <laughs> Taylor. Stella. Right, we called ourselves Strella last week. Because we were so drunk. I'm calling you to poke holes in any excuse you might have to get out of going to Roberts tonight. Sir? I just have to... No, you don't. I should probably... Simpsons did that joke before you were born. Chucks. You can do it later. I want you to be there, so I won't let you weasel your way out of this one. What if the later... What if the later ripper gets me first? Don't joke about that. You got murdered by an axe-wielding murderer? I wouldn't know what I'd do! Right then, you'd probably be kissing somebody else. Who would be there to laugh at your jokes? <laughs> Shut up! I can be funny! Intentionally or unintentionally? <laughs> okay, Mr. Critic. I forgot my one first place in 1991 Little Camp Talent Show for my hilarious stand up routine. Well, it's easy to get a crowd of Little Camp seniors and counselors to laugh at your softball jokes about Camp Label. Hey, it works all night getting my type 5 just right. Sure. It would take all night to come up with this one where everyone got terrible food poisoning the previous year. Well, yeah, people forget about the vivid, but the vivid descriptions of bodily fluids are key. Ew. <laughs> I'm laughing with my crush on the phone. <laughs> I tried to find some old photo of us from when we were in camp together. It was really hard. Most of the photos were just me. Or, you know, people getting sick. Yeah, right. I think you always got behind the camera. The only photo I could find of you was blurry and had a focus. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Just like my going live tweet. Please, everyone, like my going live tweet. <laughs> I hate getting my picture taken. Why are you afraid of people finding out about Bigfoots? Not really. If I was, I wouldn't go to school. They says you didn't go to, to school much until I showed up. What'd you say, Jeb? What? I said, like my, go like my tweet. No, no, you're fine. You already retweeted it. I checked my phone and I was like, oh, hey, look at that. Then he liked it. Strawberry Phoenix liked it. Okay, Jeb. Is that my name now? Okay, I'm literally changing my name to Jeb. Better wait on sending out for my new birth certificate. Dave says you didn't go to school much until I showed up. 
Whenever there's a camera around, I become hyper aware of how the moment can be captured. Oh, yeah, the please clap. Yeah, yeah. I gotta add that. I forgot. Did I put that in my to-do list? Um, I didn't. Okay, cool. Now I can do a remind. Jump, please clap. <laughs> yeah. Whenever there's a camera around, I become hyper aware how the moment can be captured. And I can relate to this. A bunch of things will happen before or after, but when I look back on it, that single moment will be all we can see. It becomes more important than our own memories. A lot of things could happen in a moment. You can embarrass yourself, make a mistake, or let people down. It isn't who you are. The moment doesn't tell the whole story, it's just a moment. But a camera makes it into a physical thing and it captures it forever. A lot of pressure on a moment. That's really fucking deep. I never thought about it that way. Sometimes I can't stop thinking about it. I was gonna say, isn't it just like playing guitar? Like, the reason why he's scared of recordings is probably the same way. Because you're recording one single instance of you playing a song. Like when I'm playing guitar or singing and someone pulls out a camera, suddenly I get tense and start worrying about messing up. It's a lot easier to do things without other people. I don't believe you. Huh? Taylor, you are in a band. You wouldn't do that if you are just wanted to be left alone and ignored. Damn, this really is like, I'm relating to both these characters. Because I'm like, I talked about the same therapy, I'm just like, I don't want to be in a public facing job. But I still want a job that's around people. It depends on how I'm serving the people. Is how I want to be noticed. I think it's like a consent thing for him. Like you want to be observed on a consensual level and he doesn't consent to having his photo taken. I don't understand music. Not like you do. People use a lot of big words around it. But your music makes me feel something special. Special, you say? It's something that needs to be shared. I think cameras scare you because you want to be seen, not left alone. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean it's not true. I think that the things we really want can scare us sometimes. Yeah. That being said, you're coming to Roberts. Uh, that wasn't a question. <sighs> sure thing. Come on, I may need you there. Not people who don't show their children's photos until they can consent to that. That is brilliant. I wish that some adults would be like that, because I swear, some adults just, their personality become their children. I wish that, like, People, like, I didn't ask to see a bathtub photo of your baby. Like, stop. I don't care if it's your baby's first tub. Like, come on. I knew someone who posted their ba their baby's bathtub photos all the time. I didn't like that shit. Come on, I mean, need you there. You know, so you can punch Matt for me. The ladle ripper? Right. Taylor. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Sweet, see ya. See ya. Yeah, they can get in the wrong hands. <gasps> but the snow's out. Brando, my man, thanks for coming. Okay, here's your keg and your quart half quarter. Which we eat. <laughs> it's a half quarter. Hey, Brandon. I couldn't figure out why Brandon was being so standoffish all of a sudden, especially towards Taylor. Last time we played in the band, or saw the band play, Taylor started changing his sound, and his lyrics were getting more emotional. And Brandon wasn't feeling it. I'm torn on it. Like, if your family and friends live far away, do you share photos of your baby just to them? Or, yeah, exactly. Like, just. 
ask people first. Be like, hey, do you want to see this photo of my baby? You know, like... I hate it just, like, logging into Facebook and that's the first thing I see and I'm like... Get away from me. Like, I understand if it's, like, a professionally done photo, but... There's some, like, real intimate moments people are taking pictures of. I don't know. I couldn't figure out why Brand- oh yeah. I mean, the two of them are bandmates for crying out loud. He couldn't even be bothered to acknowledge Taylor's existence? I'm gonna stay silent. Anyways, you owe me $22. What's my usual $20 fee for buying it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Hey, why don't you stay and have a drink with us? Uh, no thanks. The parents are out tonight. We get the whole place to ourselves. Yeah, like, spoiler cover your children's photos, yeah. Like, put an emoji or something over their body. Yeah, sorry, I'm a bit busy. We got candy. You're probably gonna watch some slasher flicks. It's gonna be a good time. You should... $42. Yeah, of course, man. I got it. I got it. Cool. We're doing business with you. Are you sure you won't stay? Yeah, okay, no problem. Good to see you, man. Brandon's so cool. Taylor, are you alright? I don't want to call him an asshole, because, like... Taylor, are you alright? What? You know, that was... It's nothing, I'm fine. Yeah, it's cool, he just doesn't want to hang. He's a little awesome, right? Something's going on here. I remember feeling so confused at what happened. I just really didn't know how to bring it up, so I just left it. Besides, I didn't want to rock the boat too much. I just went with the flow. So your parents are seriously gone again? Yeah, what of it? Nothing, it's just... And I'm just, like, constantly around. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, like, my parents didn't have a social life. That's the thing that weirds me out. Whenever I watch, like, movies and stuff, and kids are like, parents aren't home. My parents didn't have social lives. My parents were always home. I didn't have social lives. A social life. So, like, I was always home. My social life was on the internet. My parents' social life was on the internet, too. It's just weird to me. Like, my parents never had friends. I'd be like, Dad, who are you talking to? He'd be like, this guy from Malta, Italy. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. You got international friends too. Neat. Like, right before I came here, she was all like, Have you finished your homework? She's so anal. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. I can catch up on my homework one another. I'm like, barely behind. <laughs> behind. <laughs> You're behind in school? I missed like two deadlines. It's only because I took like two extra courses for the credits. But like I said, it's totally fine. I have it under control. I definitely don't need her on my back all the time when I'm just trying to have a bit of fun. I get it. It's pretty sweet having the whole place to myself all the time. My mom forced my sister's social life to be hers as well. Come on, Denise. Come on. Auntie Denise gang. It's pretty sweet. I'm no place myself all the time. I only drive sometimes because I can't borrow their car when they're away. Did you have your own car? <laughs> nah. I, uh, still in the shop. I want it looking sweet for graduation. But other than being a bit stranded when they split, I get to do whatever I want. You're lucky. No, he's not. Yeah, because you never see, uh, Taylor's parents, either. Sorry. It's just... Maybe Robert doesn't see it that way. Maybe Robert wants his parents there for... I don't know. Yeah, there's something wrong. I'm just lucky that I was such an outcast, she couldn't do it to my social life. Yeah, dude, same. It's like, my brother was a very social person, and I wasn't. But they never questioned it. 
they never were like, why don't you have friends? I was like, nah, my friends are on the internet. They're like, okay. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, okay, there's something wrong. No. Never mind. Sorry, I'm, I'm being weird. No worries, Tay. Did I call you Tay? Oh. No worries, Tay. Bud. <laughs> we all just need a bit of good stuff in us. Weed, booze, you know. The good stuff. Never mind, let's just head inside. Jessica's waiting in there, so... Sounds good. He's so awkward. Robert really came alive when he was behind the bar. Talking and joking with everyone. He loved being around people, and he was great at it. Once we all cracked open the keg and had a few beers, it was like everything finally came together. Being around everyone like this was always so much fun. But that night's especially awesome. We played drinking games like beer pong and flip cup and I lost terribly. Just like I predicted. <laughs> even Jessica seemed to chill out and even though he'd never admit it, Taylor was enjoying himself a lot. I feel like we're gonna have like a little porch kiss. That'd be cute. Kind of like that, that ten tense moment in the beginning of High School Musical. But after the games, we started getting on the topic of the evil that lurks in later lived in. Yeah, there have been pretty creepy people here in town. Really? I mean, it's hard for me to imagine anyone creepier than a literal ghost. Whatever, Ingrid isn't creepy. I think Jessica has beef with Ingrid. Okay, fine, not that creepy. She's just... Wait. What if Jessica and Ingrid were sisters? <laughs> That's my theory. That's my new theory. She just... We get to know her. She can be... Scary. Seriously, she's harmless. <laughs> right. There are all kinds of creepier things in Ladle anyways. Right. Like that one guy who honestly looks like a vampire. Like, I can't be sure, but I mean, come on. He has fangs and only comes out at night. Oh, you mean Ned? Ned? Uh, I guess. Okay, so we learned that there's a lake monster, and now we also just learned that there's a vampire. I'm obsessed. We need a werewolf. He's definitely pretty creepy. But what about the cave? What cave? The cave. It apparently speaks? What? Oh yeah, it tells people to explore within it. Has anyone done it? Absolutely not. That's like common sense. Never go inside a cave that speaks. Especially if it's telling you to enter it. Yeah, it really changes tactic. What, like, don't come in? Like, seriously, I don't want you to... <laughs> like, guys, like, what about the Little Ripper? That's my Robert impression. <laughs> I'm canny. <laughs> anyway, you guys mind if I change the radio station? Um, no, I guess. Okay, I'm just gonna find some tunes or something. Yeah, go ahead, man. Yep, just give me a second. Okay. Gotta find the good radio station. There it is. We interrupt this classic rock jam and bring you a special report. What's this? <sighs> Another mysterious murder in the small town of Little tonight as a group of teens were found violently dismembered. Is this for real? Shh. This is a prank! He's the prankster, the prank raptor, whatever. You know he loves pranks. The teens who were drinking underage in their parents' basement were hacked apart by an axe. Police are looking for any information on a suspect seen fleeing the scene. Described as a dark figure clothed in rags with glowing red eyes. Residents are advised to lock their doors to stay inside this weekend. We'll keep you updated on any new developments. In this case, now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Oh no. <laughs> Everyone looks terrified except for Jessica. <laughs> like, damn, like, I've never seen. I've never seen. Taylor's eyes that big. Usually he's like super easy on the eyes, but he's like fucking nervous. Taylor looks like she's 
see the ghost. <laughs> what? What's wrong? Don't you see it's the Ripper? What? Nah, I doubt it. You too? Yeah, it's probably like just an unrelated murder. He's being coy. An unrelated murder? On a Friday the 13th? With an axe? How can you not see the connection? I thought you were way deep in this whole Little Ripper thing. Yeah, but you guys convinced me it's just a legend. What? Yeah, there's no Ripper. Right, Jessica? Oh my god! Okay. Should we freak out? Play it cool or make a joke? I'm saying, like, if we freak out... We could pretend to be so spooked that we jump into Taylor's arms. We could play it cool. But yeah, or we can make a joke about it and assuage everybody who th may have thought that they were that we were totally into it. Okay, Baffy is a joke. That's what I would do. That's what I would do too, probably. Because like, I don't believe in. I don't know if I should make a public stance on how I feel about the Illuminati, but... A public stance on, on mass murderers. Mass murderers I definitely believe in, but... Um... <laughs> yeah, let's make a joke. <laughs> Stella, what are you laughing about? <laughs> Why didn't the five teens make it out of the? <laughs> Why didn't the five teens make it out of the Friday the Thirteenth party? Why? Because the little ripper was hosting it, and they were dying to stay. <laughs> Should I click out of the game? <laughs> Boo! Look, we all need to calm down here. Should we, like, board up the windows and doors? We should at least check to see if they're locked. You know, just to be safe. Well, guys, relax. We should just enjoy some more of this beer and relax. It's your third one already, though. Shouldn't you slow down a bit, Robert? The doctor said that... Come on, Jess, take a load off. You used to be such a party animal, it's like you forgot to chill. Am I supposed to chill when I have a... To have to babysit your ass constantly. You don't have to babysit anybody's ass. Here, have another drink. Ah, oh, shit, I spilled it on your ditty. <laughs> no, Robert, you're already drunk, see? I'm not drunk, it was an accident. Ugh, I'm leaving. Shit. Should we warn her? Blow her off? Or confront her? She is kind of being a buzzkill. I don't like her energy at all. And if she left the party, I would not be offended, frankly. Um, confronting her is not my nature. Letting her go would be like... I feel like warning her would probably be like the smoothest interaction we could have here. Because I don't want to come off as a dick. Blowing her off and confronting her seemed like very dickish things, so... I'm gonna warn her. You can't leave now, there's a demon on the loose. You would think that. Jessica, come on. No, you come on, Robert. I tried, I tried to be fun. I tried to talk to you about what happened. But you just... I guess I'm just sick of this. Okay then. Oh man. We interrupt this spooky classic rock jam to bring you another breaking loot news update. The mysterious dark figure who fled the scene of the grisly quadru quadruple homicide was sighted heading west on Cherry Street. Legal residents in and around the tall grass area are advised to be extra careful. Is that a Pokemon reference? <laughs> That's just up the road. It's, it's probably fine. Well, anyway, I think we're done with the news updates. What are you doing? Leave it off. <laughs> Taylor's super into it. <laughs> I don't mean I don't I don't want to listen to something else. I would rather stay informed. 
It's better to stay informed in a crisis, right? I'd rather not be reminded every five minutes that we might be in mortal peril. Or maybe there's important information we could use to, I don't know, survive better? Doubtful. I don't know, seems pretty intense. Those big socks and big feet, what's that say about me? My guy. My guy. He well endowed. <laughs> you have a big brain. That's what you got. I'm gonna drink water with Nana. My water is warm. I'm upset. I don't know. It seems pretty intense. But like you guys said, right? There's no Ripper, so you have nothing to worry about. If the Ripper isn't real. There is an act. Even if the Ripper isn't real, there's an actual axe wielding murder on the loose. That's a problem. Should we go get Jessica? She's out there by herself. No! You guys talking about me? Ah! She's holding an axe! Oh no! No! I don't want to go like this! Jessica? I want to stay calm personally, but I don't know if our character would freak out or not. I don't want to jump straight to accusations. Yeah, not the axe. She was dead ass holding that axe. Um. I mean, she was here with us while the broadcast happened, so like. Stay calm, yeah. Okay, everyone, remain calm. This may just be a big misunderstanding. You know what? You're gonna convince me? It isn't the only one here holding the murder weapon? Sure, chances are Jessica just went for a hike and found an axe without getting hacked by the actual murderer. Makes sense. That axe is evidence. This axe is made of rubber. So you can tenderize our meat before using the real axe. No, it's just the kind you buy for a Halloween costume. Sure it is. It's exactly what an axe murderer would, would say. Music, stop. What happened to the radio? Did you turn it off, Robert? <laughs> no. Maybe Jessica killed the news anchor so he couldn't reveal any more information about her. Really? Wait. It's not even on the radio setting. It's playing a tape. Ta, I called it! He pranked us! Robert's Prank Diary, October 30th. I've been planting seed in everyone's mind about the Little Ripper all school year. I really did my research on this one, read at least half a book, and watched a ton of movies. That's weird, I'll just... Don't touch the story. Tomorrow my mission is to get everyone thinking about the Little Ripper, provide hard facts, use science to back up my claims. Make sure not to take it too far. If I had one criticism of my last few pranks, it would be that I wasn't subtle enough. Get your cousin to do the voice of the new anchor. He did that one commercial for that sandwich place. So he's pretty much a professional actor. Yep. Knew you sounded familiar. Don't forget a good axe prop. Not the kitty Halloween axe. Or some hollow one that's gonna flop around and give up the goods. Okay, I'm streaming here. Thank you. <laughs> I love you, Bulba Boy. Thank you. But the higher quality, full size. Oh, and note to self, get more blank tapes. You don't want to record over this one. It's important to have this audio re record to look back on your best pranks. Guess you uh, forgot to get more tapes. Robert. I can't believe I fucking called it. Um. Um. Should we believe him? Uh, I don't want to be skeptical. I kind of want to ask him why. Robert, really? Why? Come on, it's Robert we're talking about. You have anything to say for yourself? Don't be afraid, the prankster strikes again. Bro, that was actually a really good prank, not gonna lie. Guys, guys. I get the sense that everyone is a little tense. That's on me. Let me try that again with a little more feeling. Don't be afraid, the prankster strikes again. 
Oh, what happened? Why are the lights out? Let's get power outage or something. Robert, can this prank be over now? Guys, I don't think this is part of the prank. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say this. Brandon's in on it. We didn't turn off the lights. Shut up! Yeah, please stop. I'm serious, guys. I swear, I didn't do that. I don't believe you. You didn't mention this in the prank diary. Is this another layer of the prank? Honestly, I kind of wish that would be genius. But no, I can't take credit for a prank I didn't commit. That's against the prankter code of conduct. <laughs> the fact that there's like a police siren like rushing by my house scared me even more. Also, Ingrid's reflection was in the window. So, Ingrid's doing this. Also, if you look, there's a bust. See this bust here? That's kind of funny. A little bust of a, a raptor. Oh my god, oh my god, are you seeing this? There's someone looking in the window. Robert, I swear to god, this isn't funny anymore. It was never funny. Finally, something we can agree on. I didn't do this. I don't know who that is. What do we do? Someone has to go and investigate. What? I'll do it. I'm, I'm not scared. Yeah, neither am I. Yeah, sure, I'm not going in for this macho bullshit. I'm not gonna pretend I'm not terrified. What do we do? Someone has to go. What? Have you seen a horror movie in your whole entire life? One person, alone, going to check outside? That's a recipe for Axe City! Fine. Two people go. I'll go. What? 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 Whatever. Shit, here we go! We better get sacrificed! Oh wait, never mind. We're still in future therapy, so we're good. <laughs> therapy. I forgot it's called therapy. I don't know what came over me. I just said the words without thinking. My heart was racing. It was one of those moments where everyone was looking at me expectantly. And I had no idea why I said what I said. Things were going all blurry as the awkward silence seemed to stretch on and on. I remember thinking like, this is ridiculous. I'm having a panic attack over this. I had to do something. I had to say something. I know this moment wasn't what I made the plan for, but I was panicking. So I said, screw it. I went in for it. It's time to just be genuine. I I honestly don't know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm scared and nervous and... Maybe I just want to get out there and make sure that it's nothing scary. Then we can just go back to having a good time. What if this is the Little Ripper? There's no such thing. We can't know for sure Matt isn't out there. If you're going out there, then I'm coming with you. I'm big and hairy. I can be pretty intimidating if the situation demands. No way, you need someone who knows how these things, how these demons work. I studied them for my prank, but I can also use that knowledge for good. Forget them, Stella. You don't need a brave fool trying to prove themselves. You need someone who is going to get the fuck out with you when the shit hits the fan. Come on, Stella. Who's gonna be? Fuck. <laughs> Why can't I just take them all with me? Power and numbers. Ugh. Fucking being a Libra and also thinking polyamory is cool and being a bisexual. This shit sucks. Okay. Also, happy non-binary awareness week. That's another. I refuse to make a choice. My choice is being my own thing. Uh, let's stay true to Taylor. He's big and hairy. Porch kiss, porch kiss. Come on. I predicted a porch kiss. Let's go. Do you see anything? Not really. What about over there? I see a shrub. Do you think there's anything hiding in it? I don't know. Just... 
Portuguese plays your bets. <laughs> I mean, we did have a bet going. We have a prediction. Everyone predicted yes, so... Um... I need to reopen my thing to accept it, but yeah. Just looks like a shrub from here. I knew I was definitely nervous, but for some reason having Taylor at my side made me feel braver than usual. I'm gonna go check. Wait. What is it, Taylor? Don't go off on your own, okay? Just stay close to me. This is me pretending to slide into him. <laughs> I was so surprised. Usually I was the chicken and Taylor had to bra be brave for me. Did somebody say chicken? <laughs> I'd never seen him like this. You know, so I could protect you if, uh, if there's anything in that truck. <laughs> Taylor. You know, I can protect you too. Oh. It's like, what happened on Duolingo? I dropped out of the top five. What? Yeah. I mean, I know I'm small, but. It's becoming increasingly obvious. I can deny it no longer. I am small. I mean, I know I'm small, but I'll do my best. Whether it's the little ripper or just someone trying to take your picture. We got another tape. Fuck yeah. Just some jerk trying to take your picture. Speaking of commands. Yeah, buddy. Luckily, on Saturday, I have a bunch of commands I gotta add in. Saturday, I'm gonna spend a whole two hours doing some mix, some mix-it-up stuff. What's your command, homie? I just wanted to let you know, we went to Cold Stone to get the Kirby and Mario ice cream, and they had, like, no idea what we were talking about. The conflict had to point to a picture of what Kirby meant. That's actually kind of funny. I need to see if the Cold Stone near here has the Kirby. You will DM me? Okay, awesome. Patiently waits. Um, I wonder if the uh, Old Stone is open. Old Stone. Nearby. Yeah, there's one next to the five guys. What are your hours? 11 to 10. Nana, you want to go to... Nana, you want to go get the Kirby ice cream? We should go get the Kirby ice cream one of these days. I want it to be like the big pink ball on the side of the door, for fuck's sake. Can we play sound effects with these cream? Yeah, sure. We have 20 minutes in your stream. Not right now! I mean another day. We're not gonna stream right now. I mean, we're, we are streaming right now. We're not gonna get ice cream right now. But yeah, absolutely yes. How about this? I don't work Saturday. So, but you work Saturday. I'll pick you up from work. I'll drive you back to your car after we get ice cream. But I'll pick you up from work and get ice cream. Ice cream slaps once they figure out how to make it. Hell yeah. We'll treat ourselves to some ice cream. We deserve ice cream. Ice cream rules. Alright, let's get, let's get smooched. I'll be there to stop you from getting hurt. By the way, I'm not going anywhere. Thanks, Stella. Not the music change. Stella. <laughs> what? I I heard something. Where 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 did it come from? The shrub? I I don't think so. <gasps> I was suddenly holding on to Taylor for dear life. I could feel him trembling in my arms. I was also trembling. <laughs> Just the wind. Oh. I mean, this is the actual height of me with most guys I've dated. I am not fucking kidding. <laughs> I went on a like, date with this guy who was six foot five. <laughs> they didn't even have the cute cups. Rude! I mean, our, our targets didn't have the Kirby balls, so... <laughs> I guess we can let go now. Yeah. Yeah, six or five! 
I don't know. He and his girlfriend were trying to get me into their polycule, and I was like, mm, not really into, into... At that time, I wasn't into polycules, but I was like, I'll hang out with you guys. All right, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read your command now. I have no idea what this... <gasps> I think I might know what this is. <laughs> oh, I'll, uh... When I think of... I think of the horse gif, but... Um, anyway. Yeah. But we didn't let go. I'm too fucking gay. Okay. We just held on. <laughs> horse plinko. That's not the horse gift I was thinking of! <laughs> I was thinking of the other horse gift. The two-legged horse. <laughs> that horse play going, I'm gonna pull it up. Checkeron, macaron. And it's, it's, um... Oh man, can the gift play? Can I have the gift play, please? That would be really nice. Whatever, okay, it's um. <laughs> this gift! This horse gift! <laughs> the two legged horse! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the shit that I that I was thinking of. Anyway. <laughs> we just held on, locked in embrace, looking deep into each other's eyes. We just stood there like that for a little, smiling, kind of sheepishly. Not sure what was happening. Before I even thought about what I was doing. Look at how hunched over he is. He's trying real hard. Before I could think about my plan to be genuine. I feel myself slowly being drawn towards his face. He's so tall, I had to get up on my tippy toes to reach it, just like every kiss I have. Taylor was moving closer too, like our lips were magnetized. I remember closing my eyes and letting the pull take me over. And in the moment before our mouths met, ah! We heard a scream from inside the house. Cock block! Cock block! What's that? Came from inside the house. I'm gonna fucking scream! <laughs> you know the story I told about my first kiss, right? When I was on stage and like I, I was- I almost threw up before? <laughs> like I threw up afterwards because I was so anxious? Like a few days before we kissed, we were trick-or-treating together. And I almost kissed them in their mom's parking lot, or in their mom's uh, uh, driveway. Like, we were walking back inside, I almost kissed them. I was like trying to- <laughs> This is actually a really kind of stupid memory. But like, so like four days later was the rehearsal where I kissed them for the first time. It's like, yes, I had a crush on them, they had a crush on me, blah blah blah. But we were out trick-or-treating, and we ran into some Homestuck cosplayers! <laughs> And I was like, yo! And then my crush was like, what's Homestuck? And I was like... And like, after we started dating, maybe like three months in, I was like, do you want to come over to my house and maybe we can read Homestuck together? Just you wait, there's probably still more in this episode. It's not over yet. We just might get that kiss, dude. So yeah, that's how I, I got my, my ex... Uh, my, my high school partner into uh, reading Homestuck. I guess we saw some Homestuck cosplayers on Halloween. Orville's not here though, so he'll probably watch the VOD and be like... I felt disappointment wash over me then. If only the scream had happened a moment later. But I was still kind of numb from shock when we headed back inside. Like, we were actually just about to, but I barely had any time to even think about it. Who's gonna get the points if no one voted no? I am friggin' sorry, okay, is written on the wall. What's happening? 
There was someone in here with us. Suddenly the lights came on again. We all stood looking at the writing on the wall. I've been marked for death! That blood? What else could it be? Red pain. It's not blood. How do you know? I recognize that smell anywhere. It's barbecue sauce. <laughs> Ladle's spicy secrets, sp spicy signature blend. Why would the Ripper cover my parents' basement in everybody's favorite summertime marinade? You mean Baja Blast, okay? The Ripper didn't do this. It was Ingrid. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh man, my parents are gonna be pissed. That shit's impossible to wash off. I'm... Robert, relax. It's gonna be fine. What, like your parents wouldn't be upset if you got barbecue sauce all over your house? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, like I said, we've never seen his parents. Dude, his parents, he lives in that cabin, and his parents, like, don't show up, so... He's envious of Robert having... being close with his family. I'm sorry, everybody. This is all my fault. I... I should go. What? Really? It's fine, Dave. We can just clean it up. His parents were killed by the Ripper! Oh, Mayo. I didn't mean to lose it like that. It's fine, really. No, it's not fine. I, I'm sorry. I just, I need to leave. That's all. I guess I'll go too. Tay, now you're bailing? I'm not bailing, it's just... The night's over. I can give you a ride if you want. I don't mind seeing the camp at night. And... Maybe I'll just walk. Really? That might take a while. Don't your parents get worried? I'm a fast walker. Oh. Okay. Alright, well. The night's over, it's over. Yeah. And just like that. It's like, once we all knew there were no supernatural axe murderers after us, all the excitement suddenly seemed kind of small and insignificant. Ingrid's message seemed to snap us all back to reality. Taylor and I didn't really talk about that moment between us again after that. It made me feel confused, like maybe it was all in my head. I was kind of hoping we could get a moment alone again. But every time we did, it just got awkward and I didn't know what to say. So I never brought it up again. I didn't know what happened next, but before I knew it, it was winter break and I was about to find out. The night is still young! We're doing two episodes tonight, fuck it! Okay? Man! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! I need- I need this kiss! <sighs> I hope you guys are okay with it, because it's happening. I'm gonna save the game, though. Your snapping was fairly clear IRL, but on stream it was very pathetic sounding. Hello, this is me snapping. Yeah, I'm snapping my thingies. Hopefully that worked. Please tell me it worked. <laughs> anyway, we're getting this kissy. We're getting it. I could tell that everyone was still in a funk from what happened at Robert's place. But I was going to let one awkward night ruin what we had going. With the winter break happening, I thought we were... I thought there were plenty of opportunities to share more. I'd always loved the holidays ever since I was a kid. Of course it was my second favorite time of year after the summer, of course. Me and my dad would always celebrate by making the best hot chocolate, watching holiday specials, or building a gingerbread house. Watching holiday specials, duh! Celebrate by turning off the heat so we could bundle up under a blanket and watch a bunch of holiday specials we taped. And I remember I got my, my COVID vaccine and we watched Christmas specials together. It was cute. We need to do that again. Without the COVID vaccine part, where I'm like feeling like Garbo. Every year we'd add a new special to the list. It got to the point where we had boxes of tapes. Remember how we died? We died? Shit. I don't remember that part. Oh, wait, wrong timeline. Where we all died from the COVID vaccine? Yeah. Anyway. 
point where we had boxes of tapes. We had to start picking one of the best ones. That's how I grew up. We had tons of tapes. Like Christmas tapes. And they all got ruined in the flood. My house flooded when I was uh, 16. They only flooded the basement. So we lost like all of our Christmas decorations and Christmas tapes. My brother got really pissed. Because his entire collection of every single... Thomas the Tank Engine VHS tape was down there. Dude, that shit would have sold for so much now. Damn. We used to go to Grandma's place, too, and she cooked us the same dinner she used to eat when she was a kid. Veroniki. There's tasty little veggie dumplings and kusha, which is sort of like grainy stuffing. And her and Dad would go to the den to talk. Now that I think of it, they were probably getting drunk. And I'd go outside to make snow angels. But this year was all different. Yeah, I knew I'd have to make a new tradition. It was going to be hard, but I was determined to get everyone filled up with good old holiday spirit. How? You really need to ask. Obviously, I had some incredibly, incredibly uninspired plan that would inevitably go wrong. Still is Ukrainian, yeah, hell yeah. Good for her. I didn't. I don't know what she was talking about, but I don't want to tell you what it was. Because this one is embarrassing. Let's go! Fine, I was going to sing. Do you really need to know what song? The song was... A freestyle song would be the most embarrassing. Little Drummer Boy is just a really shitty song anyway. Uh, Deck the Halls. Veroniki is a Ukrainian dish. I'm gonna look it up. Veroniki. Am I saying it right? Well, that shit looks good! It's basically pierogies, but probably better. Bacon, potatoes, butter, egg, all-purpose flour. Veroniki is more commonly used term in Ukraine, often eaten with sweet fillings, while pierogies are the national dish. Oh. Okay. What's that other one she said? A freestyle song's embarrassing. Well, there's nothing. No, I mean it. I just kind of made a song up on the spot. Yeah, I guess you could call it freestyling, but that's pretty generous. Whatever the point is, I didn't want to let our group fall apart. I wanted to fix whatever went wrong with Taylor. So the day before winter break, I showed up fully intending to get everyone pumped. But it turned out that Robert was kind of already there. Man, the snow, I can't wait to get out of there. It's finally really dumped on us. What? What? I feel like you might want to rephrase that. What? We got dumped on? Whatever, man. I'm finally getting dumped on. <laughs> okay, Robert. Okay. Go that way. If I got dumped on every day this winter, I take it like a champ that I am. You're killing me. You're killing me. Would you look at it out there? All that fresh powder just waiting for me to glide over top of it like a gliding glider thing. At last, I'll be my natural habitat. The ski and snowboard resort. Well, yippee for you. Sorry. Are you okay? Just my midterms were disappointing, I guess. Oh no, I thought I had everything under control. Yeah, well, I just told myself that this year I'd finally have some fun in high school, and that's affected your grades? I think so. I screwed up. Now I'm down a whole grade point average. I should have just kept my nose to the grindstone, but no. I let a bunch of distractions ruin my chances of... Wait, no. I didn't mean that. You're just distractions. It's okay, Day. I think we all get it. We're all having a kind of shitty time right now. It's senior year after all, dude. Well, I thought we'd be psyched right now, Taylor. Uh, yeah, well, uh... Hey, what's going on? He's got a gig. Oh. Hmm. I want to be enthusiastic about it. But also, he doesn't want a spot blown up, probably. He should have told us sooner, but... Shit's been awk. He did? That's great! 
It's definitely something. He's just being modest. Where, when? They'll have to kill me to stop me from being there. Alright, I'll let you two in on it too, because you're the coolest. Oh, stop. Yeah, stop. Listen, you can't tell anyone yet. I want to announce it my way. Raptor sit stop. Just tell us. Okay, okay. I'm throwing an end of the year party. Party? Like a party party? That's right, lounge lover. A legit more than five person party. Can't believe it. Believe it. So wait. Is that the gig? Heck yeah it is. I've been playing in this party in my head for a while now and then I was chilling with Brandon. Well I guess more like I was just buying weed from him. And it hit me. You and him have a band. Go off without one second, huh? No, I mean of course I knew that, but I didn't know how important that fact was. Like, to the party. Right. So I said to Brandon. Brandon, dude, what would you say if I told you I was throwing a party? And he was like, no one cared. Sounds like Brandon. But then I was all like, well, what if I told you that I want Guttural Punch to play at it? Wait, your band's name is Guttural Punch? We uh, haven't said a lot. Brandon said that's the name. No, it's not. Whatever, the point is he said yes. It should be good news. We're gonna have a party. Taylor's band is playing and we're on flipping winter break. We should celebrate. My place, nine o'clock. Yeah. See, lounge lovers in. Well, I can't. Really? Come on, it's just the holidays. I have to study. You have to study for what? I asked if I can get some extra credit to boost my average. I'm sure it's not that bad. Did you not hear me before? Yeah, I heard you. Your grades were disappointing. But uh, but disappointing for day is like an A minus instead of an A plus. Whatever, like you would know. Seriously, day. It is winter break though. Does that mean you're in, Taylor? Uh, come on, you me, man. I got you a sweet ass gig. To play at your party. Or to play at your party. Your point? I never asked you to give me a gig either. That's how a good friend I am. You didn't even have to. Ugh. Jeez, I didn't realize coming to my place was such a struggle for you. Yeah, Taylor. Wait, you said you weren't going either. Yeah, but at least I have a reason. They were starting to fight. It was going all wrong. This was supposed to be the start of it all turning around. Getting back to normal. Hey, guys. Yeah? What's up? It's just... Well... My dad won't be home for the holidays. Oh. It's the first time he's had to work through them, and I guess it'd be nice if I wasn't alone. No way, lounge lover. What? No way you'll be alone. Right? Dave? Taylor? Of course, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be there. Dave? Setting can wait. It seemed like my plan was back on track. Everyone was going to get together at Robert's place that night. And that time I thought that meant the group was going to be okay again. With that stress off my back, I could focus on getting myself that smooch. Robert is still a troll, but at least he does try, yeah. Damn, okay, I still have a grocery bill. If anyone wants to Kofi me for my grocery bill. Uh, timers. Bill off. No trans rights on. I have the trans rights one off. On the way from school that day, I noticed just how peaceful and pretty Lidl can look in the winter. It simultaneously put me in the holiday spirit and made me feel pretty lonely. So I went to the supplier of holiday cheer and Christmas spirit. The thing that unequivocally tells you how to feel. And now back to the holiday special of everyone's favorite sitcom buddies. <laughs> friends. Hey Stella, so I guess now that it's the holidays, we won't be seeing each other. At school, I mean. Well, anyways, I've got band practice tonight, and Brandon wants us to be a una unable to focus, but if you want to uh, talk or something, give me a call. Okay, talk to you soon. Hi, so I'm Stella. I'm, I'm 
good day. Calling for Stella. Okay, so I'm just wondering if you want to talk. School today was... One of my midterms. Anyways, give me a call if you want to talk. Bye. Lounge lover, what's up with everyone right now? Am I right? School's out, two weeks of freedom, and it's a sweet day for grabbing your board and diving in some fresh powder. What else could you ask for? Set maybe a call from you, lounge lover. Call me. I'm feeling really bad for Gay, honestly. She's not having a time. Anyway, we gotta do what we usually do, call our mans. Ring a ding ding. Stella? Taylor. Oh, that's a lot of energy. Yeah, I'm just, you know, sitting around. I feel like I have a ton of time all of a sudden. Two whole weeks, no homework, no school, just time. Lots of time. Yep. Tons of it. Well, two weeks. Taylor, I'm gonna get bored. What am I supposed to do with all of this amazing time off? It's such a non-problem, Stella. But yeah, what are you doing if you got it all figured out, huh? Well, me and Brandon are supposed to be practicing twice as much as before, so... That, I guess. Is it the party? Yeah. Man, you do have it all figured out. Maybe I should join a band. <laughs> what? You don't think I can do it? I'll have you know I took piano lessons from grade 1 to grade 8. I took piano lessons from grade 4 to grade 11. I could probably still play. Hey, listen, I'm sure you could. Then why is it so funny? One, I did not have it all figured out. Two, you don't want to be in a band. Believe me. What? But it sounds so cool. You get to play loud instruments and be creative, write songs. Most importantly, you can say, yeah, I'm in a band. Which is like, the coolest. That's debatable. I play loud music. I probably have a hearing damage, which is counterproductive. What about writing songs? I really like your songs. I listen to those tapes all the time. It sounds like you put a lot of work into them. Thanks, Stella. I, I, I did work hard on them. It, it can be kind of draining. Emotionally, mentally, physically, just like Twitch streaming. Okay, if it's so bad, then why do you do it? I guess because my music is mine? Does that sound weird? No, I think I get it. Like, you own it. Yeah, and even if it helps, I sold it or someone took my tapes, it'd still be mine. Nobody could take it away from me. It's nice. It reminds me of this lyric from my favorite band, The Screaming Badgers. Your music, your mind, your mode. Whoa, what does it mean? The first part's pretty obvious, right? Your music comes from your mind. Or your music is your mind. It's part of you. But the last line is what made it stick in my head. Your mode. I think it means that this is what you do, you know? You don't have an off switch that stops you from making music, it just happens. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I think Brandon's almost here. I, uh... I gotta go. Okay. Bye, Stella. Bye, Taylor. Even though everyone seemed to be feeling a bit better, well, good enough to want to hang out again anyway. I still want to do something special for Taylor. I want to give him something special that showed I really do him. I'm usually on the spot with presents, so I was pretty confident he was going to love what I got him. Before heading out to Robert's place, I thought it'd be nice to stop at Taylor's to give him his gift. So with his present in the back seat, I headed over to his cabin. When I got there, I walked in on an intense fight between him and Brandon. I'd seen him argue I seen them argue before, but this time was different. That's it, you let me know when you're ready to take this band seriously. What are you even talking about? For months. All you do is screw around on the tape machine recording random songs that nobody hears. Not even me. I knew you wouldn't like them. I shouldn't have even bothered showing you. Maybe you shouldn't have. You even want to play live? Like, is this shit? 
This love song shit you're writing is not what I signed up to play. Forget it. I'm out of here. He's a dick anyway. He doesn't need him. Random was out the door before he even noticed I was there. I suddenly felt like I should have let Taylor know I was coming. Hey, Stella. Hey, Taylor. Do you want to talk about it? Do you, do you want to talk about it? Well, what? The, uh, the fight you just had? No, not really. Okay. What? Nothing. It's just... Are you Brandon friends? I mean, we're in a band together. Yeah. But he doesn't even seem to talk to you when you are not at band practice. He doesn't even say hi or bye to you. He seems kind of mean to you, really. It's a lot more complicated than whether we are friends or not. Okay. Look, I've had a rough time these past few years and, well, there weren't a lot of people to turn to. I needed to do something with all the shit I was dealing with. He helped me deal. I was just so angry and he got me to channel it through our music. I don't know if, we, if I'd be here if it weren't for him, honestly. Huh. You wouldn't understand. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, that came out wrong. It's just... Complicated? Yeah. I'll respect him. I didn't want to push Taylor to talk to him about it more. He seemed like he just needed to forget about Brandon for a while. And I happen to have the perfect thing for that. Hey, I, uh... What's your present? You did? Stella? You didn't have to do that. Well, I could tell you were having a tough time lately, and I just thought... After handing Taylor his gift, I waited on, on bated breath. I really hoped he liked it. But as he looked at it, I saw his face drop. What is this? It's a photo album. I found some old photos from back in our camp days in a box at my grandma's place, remember? I thought it'd be nice to put them all in a book for you. What's wrong? It's just something to remember you by, I guess. I just remember thinking, what the hell? I mean, I gave him this thoughtful gift and this is how he reacts? It's not supposed to I mean, I kind of understand what he's saying because, like, he gives us his music and we listen to his music as, as, like, an artifact of his. We're giving him an artifact of ours. So, that kind of makes sense. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, forget it. No, tell me what you meant. Still, I... You can't just say stuff like that and expect me to forget about it. I don't understand. I came here to cheer you up. I just really thought you'd like it. <gasps> Hi, Orville! So far, we have not gotten our smooch. We almost kissed him. Like, we were, like, inches away, and then something happened. Um, you can- I don't know if you're gonna catch the rest of the VOD or not. Tease. Yeah, I know. We just gave him a Christmas present, and shit's tense now. I'm sure it will at some point. Okay, awesome. I hope that your D&D game was great. But hello. I even wrote that lyric you like on the first page. Your music, your mind, your mode. Oh. You remembered. Yeah, dude, I remembered. I'm obsessed with you. you put a lot of thought into this, huh? Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just... For you, those are pleasant memories. When you look at those pictures, you see all the fun times you had at summer camp. You see your camp friend, who was a fun Bigfoot. It was good, I shared my, my little pony YouTube poop you posted on Discord a while back. Yeah! Apple Bloople! <laughs> I love that, it's like the best. It's like... I was gonna say it's my favorite YouTube poop, but it's not. My favorite is the one where uh, the king gets a new car and it takes Link on a ride. And they get they get they go drunk driving. <laughs> that shit's so funny. 
Anyway, you see your friend, who was a fun Bigfoot. You remember it as an adventure, but I... I was still there after you left. I'm still here. This was never just a vacation for me. You went home, and Ladle stayed that perfect thing. But it's not perfect, it only got worse and worse after every summer. Until... Until what? Taylor, please tell me. I feel like these last two are the same sentiment. As someone who's bad with social cues, these are all the same. So this, worst, this first one is like, I'm worried about your mental health. These two are like, I worry about your mental health and XYZ. But speaking in the passive voice may not be... Saying I care about you may be the better option. Go with care? Yeah, I was gonna say go with care. I care about you. I, I can't. Why won't you talk to me? <laughs> um. Yeah, we're not kissing him in this tense ass moment, dude. Oh man. Um. I don't want to make it about me. Saying that are you mad at me is like making it about you. Is this something about me? It's awkward. Don't you trust me sounds manipulative. I go with the other two. Yeah, this is manipulative. This is making the, something about me. Is this something about me? Is there something that makes me inherently hard to talk to? He was still just standing there. He couldn't even look at me. It's these two. Like, he's been dodging the parents stuff. Is it your parents? I haven't seen them since I got back. I'm really worried. I just don't want to talk about it. Just let me in, Taylor. I'm here for you. Now you are, but what about when we graduate? You'll go off to college and... And what? Whoa, I tried... <laughs> And you'll leave me. Like the rest of the people I care about have. That's why me and Brandon work. And you and me don't. Taylor. Why would you say that? I won't leave. I... Everyone says they care about you. And they're here for you. But then... They raise you. They see you every day. Then they're just gone. My parents... What? You want to know what happened? They're... My parents are gone, Stella. And they're not coming back. I was shocked. It's not coming. I had a million questions. Why did they leave? When did they leave? Are they okay? But I knew that what Taylor needed in that moment was for me to be there for him. I want to do these in this order. They're like, I'm sorry, what can I do for you? I'm going to comfort you. I think what do you need is the most obvious. Yeah, exactly. We don't want to pity him, but the comfort can be stifling if we don't ask. But technically, you should do all three things. Happening again. The worst possible moment. All these ways I knew I should react in this kind of situation. All I could do was stand there staring at him like a fool. I'm starting to think that maybe I deserve it. Dude, I'm so emotional right now. I mean, you got me a present. All I could do was be an asshole to him. Uh, I just want to tell him how wrong he was. 
This is too forward. But also, we're trying to get a kiss. I don't know what this means. This seems like the obvious answer. Water. Yeah, drink your water. Shit. I feel like make him feel better is the right thing. The one in caps? I... It was no use. I was frozen. Then when Taylor finally looked at me, I saw vulnerability in his eyes that nearly crushed me. Tell him some, tell him anything, T -t Taylor. And that was all I could get out. I couldn't look him in the eyes anymore. When I looked away, I felt like I saw his cabin for the first time. All I saw was poorly washed clothes hanging from the clothesline in the middle of the room. I saw the dirty pots and pans sitting on the shelves, seemingly unused for days. I saw that he was living alone, truly alone. And I couldn't take it anymore. As tears started to well up in my eyes, I turned to leave so he couldn't see. For some reason, it didn't feel right for me to cry, so I left. That's the last thing he needs! I asked him to open up, and when he finally did, what did I do? Nothing. I wasn't sure if I even wanted to go to Robert's place after what happened. But my determination to smooth things over and get everyone in the holiday spirit won over. When I got there, I realized I was actually a bit late. Everyone was dead silent. Were they talking about me? Were they fighting again? It wasn't really that awkward between everyone. So, here we all are! Anyone else really feeling the holiday spirit right now? Yeah, not really. So the one looked me in the eye again. I honestly couldn't believe that he actually came. He was just sitting there as if nothing had even happened. There was so much I wanted to say, but I couldn't find the words. I started thinking that maybe it was a mistake coming here after all. But since I was there, I tried to make the best of it. So, uh, does anyone have any fun holiday traditions? Ugh, what a lousy question. Holidays? Yeah, it's not all commercial. It's all commercialized. Facts! Just saying. Companies just take people's religious practices and boil them down to buy this thing. It becomes meaningless to the point where even people who aren't religious celebrate a generic holiday season. Yeah, Taylor is the best option. He's so based. <laughs> that way there's more people to sell to. Oh, that's a silly tradition, Taylor. Not a conspiracy. I never said it was a conspiracy. Man, don't you two like anything? Are you really too cool for the holidays? Us too cool? You're the jock. You're starting to fight again. I'm not a jock. What does being a jock have to do with liking the holidays? Jocks are the default male in high school society. You're a normie. <laughs> yeah, Taylor's... Well, remember, Taylor, uh... There was, like, a construction site to flatten the forest into highway, and Taylor, like, fucked with their stuff so they couldn't flatten the forest anymore. So, like, he's super based. He's big commie energy. We knew that from the first episode. Me yeah, and Normie, I'm a raptor in case you haven't noticed. I had to do something to stop him. And I'm a fairy. He's a Bigfoot. Your weirdness doesn't mean shit in Ladle. Come on, I think I stick out a little. I did what I had to do. I started singing. And I went freestyle with it. That was my plan, after all. When the snowman waves hello, and you got some good, good snow, give the gift of a hot cup of joe or a different gift. Just let me know. Uh... <laughs> There's actually a root with root and decisions to wrestle with where you work with Bigfoot's keep Vinny Cobbler from bulldozing a forest. Hell fucking yeah. 
Maybe we just needed a bit of good stuff. Robert? Huh? Beer? Oh, we're out. Really? Yeah. What's up with you, man? Nothing, why? You practically drag us over here, and then it's like, you don't even want to hang out. I don't know what you're talking about. It's just no booze, no big speech, or even decorations. That's really unlike you. Well, I'm sorry that I didn't put on some big production this one time. It didn't even occur to me that there might be a non-wrestling related route in that book. Yeah, actually. I didn't drag you here, okay? I told you I had to- I had work to catch up on. Just like- You just like dis dismissed that as me being a nerd or something. So what's your break? How behind could Day Lily possibly be in school? You don't know shit about what I've got going on. How could I know? Every time I want to hang out, I have to convince you two to actually do it. It's exhausting. Hey, leave me out of it. Yep, classic Taylor. You act like you always want to be left alone all the time, but then... Then what? Why are you here? Yeah, why come and hang out with us if you're just gonna act like it's some nuisance? Just in your cabin all alone if that's what you want. Um... We'd be being here right now. Taylor does want to hang out, it's just... You want me gone. It's not what I said. Whatever, this is bullshit. Why are you coming after me now, Dave? You need to be sick of everyone's shit. Hey, guys. What? It might, it might work out, I don't know. I'm not the one who forced you to come here, remember? I could go back. I have a safe state. It fucks up. So now I forced you to come here? Nice. You two are plenty happy to come here and drink my booze and use my house before. But now the one time I don't make it super easy for you, it's like I kidnapped you or something. Nice. You should assume everyone wants what you want to do. Maybe not everyone wants to party all the time. Maybe I should ask if I want to do something before telling me, before telling everyone I'm doing it. Nice. I feel like this seems supposed to be awkward. I don't know. You know the feeling like when you're hovering between being there in the moment and losing yourself in your own head? Just association. I was in the car driving away from Robert's house, but I was also still there. In the middle of them fighting. I was still with Taylor in his cabin frozen and still trying to find something to say. I was still at my grandma's funeral wondering why I couldn't cry like I should have. I felt like I'd lost it. The thing. Whatever it was. Hi, Bryn! How you doing? I know you're not. things are not going well for you, but I hope that things turn around for sure. Yeah, dude, I have no idea if this is under Taylor Mass Effect. I'm like sweating. I might go back. To catch you up, we just caught a very awkward conversation and all our friends argued. We got the sad boy music, so... Yeah. Whatever made me make those ridiculous goals and plans, it all felt so hopeless now. I feel like this is part of the story. It felt so immature. I am not this person. Hey, it's your stream. Let's focus on you. Thanks for say say saying that, though. Aw, thank you. I mean, like, I want to focus on you at the same time, you know? It's the experience we go through together. Sad Boy music is best music. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I love a good Sad Boy song. I'm not the kind of person who has friends. Or a boyfriend. I thought I was, but look what happens when I try. The real party! That just goes to show this was part of it. Okay, I'm gonna load up the old save because I don't have. I don't think we have another half hour to keep going. Um, I wanna see what happens. Um, load up this save and see what happens. What? I loaded up the old save. 
the current save is still loaded. That reminded me of the way that I would talk about myself pretty Here's the thing, Bryn. This character... This character is so much like me pre-transition that I got crazy dysphoric well, last stream. Like, we had to, like, sit down like, like mid-game before we even got to the good part of the game and I was just like, let's talk about this. So we, like, talked out our feelings about dysphoria and shit and I felt so much better and I got through the game, so. Oh, I... Oh, we got that right. So, yeah. Okay, let's go through the story. Choose the same choices. But change the song, or change the thing that we choose at the end. It could mean nothing, and it could mean something. I didn't save, like, the first time, the first time I streamed this game. So I had to like click like this through the whole game. Try to speed read things I didn't see. Nice. I had a similar experience during Tell Me Why Let's Play. It's a great game. Too. I was actually planning on um. Yeah, you're busy being a psychic horse. Um, I was planning on playing that game next month actually, because my two years on uh, top sur my two years since top surgery date is in August. I thought I could just play that game to celebrate that. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, trans people really do have similar experiences. I've been thinking a lot about how, like, there's those TikToks of, like, people talking about what's a moment that you had pre-transition that you didn't realize, like, an old memory of yours that always felt off, and then after you transition, you realized. Oh, it's free every June? Okay. I think Nana bought it for me. Thank you. It's been two years. And honestly, since having it, I feel like I've, uh... Not much has changed. Like, not... I mean, like... I feel like since having it... I don't remember what it was like beforehand. I just remember... Never being in my body. And now I feel in my body more often. I have a weird one. My parents used to tell this funny story growing up. Oh man. I have so many wacky ones. Like one time I'm sitting on the couch with my legs open and my grandmother was like, close your legs. When I was a kid, like six, I had a breakdown once when I kind of realized I was going to grow up to look like my dad. So <gasps> Same though? Like, the very thought of ever trying to look like my mom instead of my dad made me peep a little bit. Yeah. Get that about feeling like you're not in your body. I felt that so much. It's so relatable. Ugh. It's not like I wanted to have favoritism, but like... Okay. I wish there was a fast forward button. Okay. Just a little guy. Okay, here we go. What we want to talk about is what we said. And we talked about the thing with Brandon. And then... Let it go. I said let it go, but then he brought it back. And then, he got uncomfy. Actually, now that we have the hindsight, I'm getting Elliot Page back. Yes, exactly. Like, this was so much like me pre-transition. Now that we're back here, do you think we should try the why do you still think I'm leaving? Since that is his big insecurity, or is that pushing the button to... Kind of thinking. That might help our case a little bit. 
Seems like a better answer than tell me what you meant. Yeah. Why do you still think I'm gonna leave? What did I do? I don't understand. I came here to cheer you up. I just really thought you'd like it. I even wrote you that lyric on the first page. Okay, so that's... The dialogue kind of looked the same. I really remembered. You put a lot of thought into this, huh? Yeah. Look, I'm sorry. It's just... Maybe these are pleasant memories. Yeah, we read this part. Um, still there, still here. For vacation. I care about you. It's always best to be honest, yeah. And then he told us about those parents. And we thought that we were gonna leave them, okay. Okay, his parents just left. They're not coming back, yeah. Ask him what he needs. And then we had a panic attack. Okay, so last time we chose the, the caps option. Because, of course, Baffy said that that's the obvious one. Maybe save here and see what the other two mean, yeah. Page two. Okay. Page that one. All three of these will give the same answer. Yeah, let's see. There's no use. Yep. It's the same answer. Dude, what's that? BSOD? Blue screen of doom. So like I'm saying, I think this is a tension point that's supposed to happen. Yeah, like on a Microsoft computer, yeah. No, I know what you mean. More Mass Effect than Undertale, yeah. Yeah, this is supposed to happen. There's, this is supposed to be a point of contention for everybody. Well, Delta Rune isn't really choice based. Undertale is choice based. Unless it is, and I didn't pay attention. I didn't focus on a lot of discourse with Delta Rune. Maybe I should watch a thousand Delta Rune videos. Allegedly more Delta Room than Undertale. Okay. This is the part where I wanted to change it. Maybe we should talk about something else. Yeah, maybe we should talk about something else. Nope. Same dialogue. Okay, so this dialogue was supposed to happen. Okay. It's leaving us on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Bro, I don't think we're getting that kiss this week. Damn. Cliffhanger for next week or keep going? We have 20 more minutes. Hey, when I don't get a kiss for a whole week. Yeah, dude. We have 20 more minutes until I gotta go. Since it's the same, we can delete the last three saves. Yeah, I can just leave them there. There's nine pages of saves, so. 
I'd say it's safe to do 20 more minutes. Okay. You know what? I'll do it for Orvi. I'll do it for Bryn. We got this. I wish I could say that after the winter break, we came back to school and started hanging out again. That we worked things out and everything went back to normal. But that didn't happen. We'd see each other in the halls and even say hi, but... It was like this distance between us. Taylor and I had fights before, but those were different. Just immature kid stuff. But what he said to me last time, I was at his place, but with parents and everything. I didn't know how to deal with it. I should have reacted better, but I didn't know how. I didn't know what he needed from me anymore. I felt like maybe I'd smothered him before. Maybe even forced him to tell me something he wasn't ready to. So I gave him some space. And Taylor kept his distance. He barely even acknowledged my existence when we saw each other in the halls at school. That was when we even, he even decided to show up for school at all. It was unbearable having to deal with his silence and his averted gaze. I wonder where he was spending all his time. Maybe he was doubling down on band practice just the way Brandon wanted it, though. But just when I felt like we were starting to get close again, after what happened between us at Robert's place, it felt like we almost kissed. I wondered if there was any chance of us getting back to that place. Or if he even wanted to. But it seemed ridiculous to even think about it then. I just felt like when I lived in the city again. Like when... Oh. Did we have a falling out? Did we try to kiss an old crush or did we get ditched? What if our old crush was our friend? And tried to kiss... Tried and ditched us after we fell out. <laughs> That's the Libra energy. Um, we're getting a little backstory. We're in the middle of therapy again. Bear therapy. Therapy. Um. And we're reminded of a moment in our past. Is there a moment in our past, a falling out with a friend, us trying to kiss an old crush, or getting ditched? So if the climax is the same for all three alerts, I can see where the tension comes from with both Dan and Taylor. I wonder what it is with the robber. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, don't knock therapy. Yeah. Therapy's important. Um, I think the contention with Robert is that he's hiding more than he thinks, than you think. Like, he's one of those characters who appears one-sided, but he's actually really complex. So, like, like, I was just, like, stereotyping him as a fuckboy, but I think he's more than a fuckboy. Like, he actually, you know, like, that moment we had where we tried to steal his clothes was actually, like, super important to his characterization. Because we're like, oh, he's not just some douchebag. He's actually, like, a really complex guy. So. Maybe the real monster here is us. <laughs> I kind of want to say, clearly he's complex, but one part is that he's clearly insecure and needs friends around. He's an onion. He has layers. Um, I kind of want to say that we had a falling out with a friend. Because we talk about how we don't have friends. Yeah, like an ogre, basically. I feel like falling out with a friend is pretty similar to this situation. We see how Taylor pushes us away. We can see how Dave would push us away. How would Robert push us away when this whole thing is being so clingy? Maybe he's scared of real intimacy. Like, he's all about jokes, but he's scared of being serious with us. He's all about joking and pranking and sports, but he's never about telling the truth and being sincere with us. So that's why we always have an option for being sincere. I guess I can see that one. Yeah, exactly. I said we had a falling out. Like when I had a falling out with my friend there, we were at this concert with my dad and we ran into some other kids from school. They made fun of us and called us babies. I'll be honest, I might play this in my own time. Yeah, you can play my copy. You can log into my scene. I could really tell it bothered her. 
for a while we still talked here and there but eventually we stopped and then it was like she hated me so i started hating her i don't even know why no this time there was no plan or goal to win them back it seemed like every plan i made just ended up blowing up in my face so yeah Brynn has a giant teddy bear, and on heavy days, I hold on to it and cry. I got a mountain of stuffed animals over there. If you do, I'd like to hear how the other roots differ. Yeah, me too. I might even watch you play, TBH. You can hang out in Discord, watch you play or something. That'd be cute. Every plant. Because I'm pretty fond of seeing how different roots and Yeah, exactly. Like, I was planning on replaying this in Dating Day and seeing how that goes. Or seeing if there's an option where nobody likes me like i just fumbled the bag on every relationship so yeah this is just a game book but a game that's kind of like a book come on dave wiener review raptor boyfriend <laughs> seemed like every plan i made just ended up blowing up in my face so this game has internal consistency instead i made a rule i was never gonna make a plan again Yep, that's right. I was living on the edge. Well, yeah, but if I didn't make a plan or a goal, then there was no way I could go wrong. You see what my logic was? So, yep, that was the plan. And one morning, about a month before the last day of school, I found THE note from my dad on the fridge. Stella, are you okay? Oh, hey. The raptor lacks internal consistency is filled with annoyingly weak attempts at humor and drama. <laughs> My attempt to be a winner. Yeah, I think that uh, Taylor is the most internally consistent. You still recommend Had to Full Boyfriend? I might go back to that someday. Now that I don't have pressure. I like your little colorful shorts. That's very trans of us. The raptor lacks internal consistency and is filled with annoyingly weak attempts at humor and drama. <laughs> you missed the drama prank we had on the Friday the 13th episode. That was before the Christmas one that blew up in her face. Oh, hey, um, I'm okay. Really? You look so majorly dweeby. No, just, uh, down. Especially because it seems like it doesn't have internal consistency. But when you're down to all roots, you unlock a final root where you find out why it seems like nothing in the roots were consistent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I just got some, uh, dad left me the snow. I haven't been avoiding it. Okay. I never said you were. Sounds like an argument. Yes, you have. Sounds like an argument. How's the band? Sounds like a deflection. And the bird government kills you if he fails to get on any character's route. That's a thing. Damn. I enjoyed the little lesbian uh, motorcycle moment we had with that one bird. That was fun. Just pre-affiliate things. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what to choose. Argument, argument, deflection. Definitely not the last one. The last one's a big no-no. Uh, if it was me personally, I would say yes, you have. I don't like any of these options, but I would also be calm and unaggressive about it. Yeah. Cause that's the other thing about these choices, is they don't have tone indicators. It's like, come on, like, please, tone indicator? Like, yes you have, or... Yes you have. From my viewpoint, yeah. Here's what I think, I care about you and like to resolve this. Yeah, exactly. But also, we're awkward high schoolers, so... Yeah, this character is just, yeah, my, I just, yeah. My whole time that I've been doing this game, I'm just like, one, dysphoria, because this is basically looking at my high school self. Two, I'm autistic, what choice do I pick? <laughs> Just assume your tongue will always be the most awkward. Yeah, because we're an awkward person. Um, we can save up here, okay. 
Oh, there is a skip button! My bad. This lottery is definitely too big for a normal story night, but it has a thing. Nana, wh why did you just scream? Yeah. Nana, what's wrong? Oh, because I just figured out that you can skip? Yeah. I I never said you were. Yeah, I know. I thought that you might be thinking it through. I'd be thinking it though, and like I assumed. Usually a little icon pops up in the corner, okay? I didn't know there was a save function in this game either after that first time, so... Like me having furiously click ten minutes before stream started? Yeah. No, well, like I said, I'm not. It's just been kind of, you know, I was thinking maybe we could... Hey, <laughs> hey, he was cut off at the bottom. And suddenly we were interrupted by Robert and Day. So awkward. Oh, hey. Ooh, he's got the cut off. She's letting her wings out. So, uh, I guess this is it then. What? You know, graduation is next week, so... Right. Bye, little hind. I know, right? We should do something. Like what? Well... I was gonna throw one last huge end of the year bash that only you four, us four are gonna be at! Um, it's still happening? Yeah, I thought so. Next weekend? You're still playing, right? I don't know. We'll have to see. It's been a while since we agreed to that. Okay. What about you, Day? You still in? Yeah, um, I may have an appointment with the guidance counselor then. On the weekend, really? Yep, kinda last minute, so... Oh shit. The raptor reminds me so much of my high school self. I was super awkward and weird. It was also aggressively feminist and would pick fights with bullies. Oh yeah, Robert is probably totally like a secret feminist. I also hung out with nerds, but I also threw parties. Yeah, basically him. Because everyone here is nerdy. He's secretly a nerd. He likes conspiracy theories. Alright then. We kind of fell in this awkward silence again, and I felt this was my perfect chance to tell them my news. But everyone was so down. I couldn't stand to bring the mood down any further. Stiller, are you gonna go? Huh? The, what? Robert's party. Well, do I answer or tell my news? And they're, they're the best party. Nothing like having a geeky kid super into chemistry teach them how to brew several gallons of mead for a rager. Ah, <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what uh, Robert would do. Damn, we all out here getting dysphoria. Dysphoria, these nuts. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad one. Um. I kind of want to tell them the news, but also confirm that we're going to the party. This shit's rough. No dysphoria when drunk. I don't know, I always felt like more dysphoric when I was more aware of my body, I don't know. Um... Shit. News? I think this might be a good time for a deflection. I think you're right. Oh, wait. You know what? No worries. I'll probably just go see doing see do it. See doing with the guys at Zach's cottage, anyways. Okay. So I guess this is it then. Yeah, I guess. Maybe I'll see you around. Yeah, maybe. Put the band aid off. I'm moving! No way, like for real? Yeah, I found out from a terrible note from my dad that my dad left for me this morning. Damn. When are you moving? Basically right after school ends. Oh. My dad's mentioned that he might not want to stay here, but I guess... I don't think he was serious or like actually going to sell my grandma's house. Yeah, that's harsh. 
figured we had at least the rest of the summer. He still wants something going on with us. I was pretty shocked. I couldn't bear to look at anything. Especially Taylor. He knew that if it, if I did, I might have started crying for real. Well, who knows what this means, right? Huh? The party's gotta happen now. Seriously? I've never been more serious. There's no way I'm gonna let Stella get through high school unpartied. Yeah, this shit hurts. Like, we just learned about Taylor's abandonment issues, so... The party is back on? It wouldn't be a visual novel without a party at the end. I mean, for real. You bet, lounge lover. You don't call me that again, lifting my spirits way up, then. You'd all better be there. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta give Stella a send-off she deserves. Right, Taylor? I'll be there. For sure. <laughs> cool. I mean, thanks. Awesome, it's settled. I'm inviting everyone I know. Getting all the kegs in the ladle. When you know, you say. It's gonna be a total rager. Right? No better way to have a meaningful goodbye than inviting half ladle to. half a ladle high of Robert Rapperson's rager. Sounds intense. Okay, everyone, I need you all to listen up. Yes, coach. This could very well be the last time we have together. Sir Robert of the Holy Rail refusing to let things die so easy. He says the most off the wall shit. Especially the bond of a round table so righteous. It's on all of us to see this end of the year bashed in for lounge lover. Everyone we've ever known. But we will fondly be remembered by all who had the privilege of joining our bash. Cool, no pressure. Taylor, with your awe inspiring tunes, you will sing our triumphs for all to hear. Sure, you know, stick to the, stick to the set list, too. Today, you'll bring your wise eyes and sharp wit to see everyone through to the end of the night. We'll see how sharp my wit will be after a few beers. And I will briefly host the party at Manor Raptor City, providing munchies, kegs, and weed for all. Cool. What should I do? My well, fair lady, just bring yourself a party attitude and ice. You do actually need ice. He's a good streamer, uh, ice and fire underscore twitch.tv. You know, you have the biggest truck, so. Alright, I'm on it. So you know what to do. See you all at my place this weekend. For sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, see ya. Therapy! I wanna high five with fish. <laughs> I don't remember like any of the quotes in context with four swords. Not gonna lie. Somehow, Robert managed to turn it all around and get everyone together for his party again. I was so nervous and excited to make it a good time. I kept thinking about what ice to bring. How much would we need? One bag or three? Cubed? Crushed? Regular? Snow melting? Slow melting? There are a lot of quotes. I said a lot of good shit. I just don't remember any of it. When I got home from school that Friday, I knew I would have to mentally prepare myself. Yeah, we're more tech. I sent you the spreadsheet, so... Yeah, we had each other to bounce off of you, right? I have a feeling that if you don't do something, time will just stand still. Me! I got ADHD! Are you humping the wall? I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly! Nan and, Nan and I are bouncing off each other. <laughs> Good timing. That day after school, I just sat there staring at the TV, hoping that if I just did that, nothing else can would stop. Maybe I won't have to move. I won't have to leave Ladle. Why local residents are thinking of leaving Ladle? Coming up! Hello, Mr. Starosta. This is Ian. I'm calling in regard to the Reynolds offer on the house. Reynolds are happy to settle for the original asking price, but have a few stipulations. Please call me back at this number at your earliest convenience. Congratulations! If there are any questions or concerns regarding the sign-off, please let me know. Thanks and have a lovely day. 
Hey, lounge lovers. So the party's later tonight at 8. I'm expecting you there. And, uh... <laughs> you won. Congratulations. I didn't Congratulations. win yet. You won. Congratulations. Congratulations. You won. Congratulations. You won. Congratulations. You won. Cube dice for a bit of water, yeah. Congratulations. You won. Congratulations. You won. You won. Congratulations. You won. Yeah, that's the message we get on the phone. And, uh, I'm thinking maybe it'd be cool if we hung out later, you know, just the two of us. Anyways, your call- oh yeah, give me a call too. I feel like talking, or if not, I'll see you at the party. Uh, hey Stella. I don't know why I keep leaving messages on here. If you wanna call me, you'll just call me. Okay, we can finish the game. Yeah, let's go. I mean, sorry that came out of the definitely wanna hear from you. Um, you wanna talk about stuff, so call me anytime. Okay, bye. Stella, every, everything's so wild right now, am I right? Uh, I'm here if you wanna, you know, talk about anything. If not, I understand. I'll just see you at Robert's party later. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, later. We look so fucking miserable. Okay. It's time. Stella? Hey, Taylor. Hey. So, Taylor, I, I'm sorry. Please don't. I should have said something. I had no idea. Fine, I mean, it's, I know. It's not fine, I was a shitty friend. No, you weren't. I never told you. It's not on you to, like, read my mind. Yeah, but I should have said something after you told me. No, it's okay, really, I know. It was, like, really awkward. I feel so horrible. Listen, I know there's a lot to talk about. I definitely want to talk to you about it. I mean, at least I owe you that. But not right now. Right now, I just want you to know that. You really made my year so much better. Taylor, I don't regret a single minute we spent together. Me neither. Even when you called me up drunk and pretended to be a skeleton? You said you need to be laid to rest. <laughs> what? That wasn't me. That was a skeleton. You know, you can't even try to convince me of that. You have no evidence. <laughs> right, well... <laughs> yeah, I know. We wanted to get boned. Like, you better... I like you better as a fleshy skeleton. <laughs> you too. <laughs> I mean... The way he like looked away. <laughs> yeah. Overall, it's probably been one of the best years of my life. I mean, even counting camp. Yeah, me too. So at Robert's party, I guess I'll be going up to play. Oh my God, right? How'd you feel about it? Do you think you'll be ready? Uh, yeah, I think so. I kind of had a surprise plan for it. He's gonna sing to us! Really? What is it? Well, I can't tell you. That wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> right. I didn't know you were one for surprises. Me neither. Anyways, it's kind of special, so make sure to watch, I guess. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I love you, the Bulba Boy. Holy shit! Cool, I gotta get ready. I guess I'll see you there, then. For sure. See ya, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go! Once I gather my thoughts, and the ice... Yeah, this game fucking rules. I love for Roberts. I remember being in the car- I'm gonna- This is gonna be the first- The second game I- I forgot I rated started. This is gonna be the second game I, I rate on Steam. I remember being in the car and nearly shaking with excitement. I was going to a party. A real party! I felt like everything was happening all at once. The party, me moving, the group getting back together. Well, at that point, I had no idea what else to expect. Hey, Cashew. You come for the moment? I see you down there. It was all changing. I pull over and calm down. Meanwhile, the ice was slowly melting along with my brain. Eventually, I could breathe again and made my way to the mass of bright lights and music that was Robert's house that night. Here, Cashew. Come on. Stop staring at me and jump up here. Hi! 
<laughs> Cashew's here. Oh shit, this is a full on party. Cashew. Stinky little guy. There it was. First real party. Finally. You know what? I found out. I don't like parties. It was loud, crowded, stinky, and I couldn't find anyone. Yeah, dude, when I was at that ska show in November, it's that whole room just smelled like farts. When I got there, I saw we were already like there were already like 15 people there. I was immediately overwhelmed, I didn't recognize anyone. Where were my friends? I began having nightmarish vision of not being able to find Robert, Jay, or Taylor. People see me trying to push through the crowd, laughing at me. Pitying me for not being able to find anyone to talk to. Maybe also for my smallness. Just when I thought, maybe it was too late to turn back and drive away. It's a day. I remember rushing to her like a drowning swimmer to a life preserver. Hey. Oh. Stella, hey. This is literally just me. Yeah, dude. Her whole face seemed to brighten up. I felt mine do the same. I guess Robert really meant it when he said he'd invite half a ladle. I know, right? I don't think I've ever seen this many teenagers in one place. That's counting school. Yeah, at least they're dispersed in different classes and stuff, but here... They're all so close together. It's worse inside. This is bringing up a whole... Yeah, dude! Like, I had so much dysphoria memories playing this already. And I had to do it all on stream. Love you, Bulba. Stay safe and take care of yourself, brother. Take care of yourself, Bryn. I think you need it. Drink some water. Take a nap. Goodbye. Have a good one, Bryn. You're so cute. I love you, Cashew. Cashew says bye. Yeah. Cashew says bye. He's a good boy. Head to the washroom, and I stepped on some things. Yeah, this is a. Uh... This is pre pre transition holding simulator. Let's head to the washroom. My stuff on something squishy. Ew, what was it? Oh, nothing. It's a person. Gross. Hello again, Akbar. We still haven't gotten the kiss yet, but we're in the last episode. We have to. We have to get the kiss now. So I was lurking while I was getting dinner. Oh, you're totally fine. Um, we had the ghost moment. But then also, we visited Taylor's aban. We listen. We visited Taylor's cabin and got in a little fight. And then we went to another group outing, and everyone got into a fight. And now we're at the end of the year party. So Taylor's supposed to sing, and he's got a surprise for us. What? Yeah, you know Bryce, the deer-looking guy with the antlers. Vaguely. Well, he was just laying on the ground, singing along to the music while people stepped on him. Jeez, is he okay? Looks like the uh, music video. Down, down, and an earlier round. Sure, we're going down, duh. That's the one with the antler guy, right? The music video? Um, Jeez, is he okay? He seemed totally fine. What the hell? <laughs> I know. The moment was like old times, and I just wanted to stay like this forever. Hey, so since it's so loud, I was thinking... Yeah? I mean, after we say hey to everyone, maybe we could... Fallout Boy, yeah. Oh, so you're actually turned up. I honestly didn't think you had the friggin' guts. Oh. Hey, Ingrid. Bella. Wait, why wouldn't I show up to a party that was thrown for me? Well, what? Since when was this party for you? I'm moving away next month. <laughs> really? I mean, I'm so sorry. It's really too bad. Hey, so Ingrid, can you grab me a drink? Sure, day. But you won't mind if I say my goodbye to Stella? I really am sorry about your leaving so soon. But hey, it's not so bad, I guess. I mean, you're barely even a blip on our friggin' radar after all. Red. 
What are you expecting anyways? Showing up senior year? Not like you could have made much of an impression anyways. I kind of want to be mean to her back. Either why are you being like this or you're just jealous. I feel like you're just jealous though is the meanest option of these. Yeah, everyone is so awkward because we're in high school. So it's like literally any Ingrid I've ever met, yeah. Why are you being like this? Yeah. Why are you always so mean? I'm just telling you like it is. If you can't handle it, that's not my problem. <laughs> I can't believe you sometimes, Ingrid. Anyway, we'll be seeing you, I guess. Dan and I are gonna hang around for a bit. Uh, then we have to leave early. We got plans, so... Really? I... That's right. We have pretty important things to talk about, so... Okay. Um, no. Actually, I wanted to stay and have my goodbye with Stella. You know, the whole reason we came here. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Act like you're really gonna miss her. Like she even deserves a freaking party. Well, I think she does. Why do you want to act like you're so close all the time? You barely even hang out with her anymore. I... You, that's not... I could tell that day was getting flustered. It was true, we hadn't spoken in months before this. Then that nagging voice in the back of my mind started getting a little louder. What if Ingrid was right? What if I really wasn't that close with Day at all? What if I was kidding myself? Oh, hey, isn't that Robert heading over? Why don't you go talk to him? Whoa. Then Robert came all over. Came over. He was super drunk over. Of course he was. In his jorts, yeah. Yeah, I really like Day. I really want to romance her next. She's one of your close friends, even if Taylor is your husband, oh, yeah. I was surprised since I was only it was only 8 30. Hey ladies, so glad you could join us today. Hi Robert. Hey. Hey, I put the ice in the cooler. Hope it's okay. It's totally cool. What's not? What? I've gotta be honest. I took too long coming here by the time I finally made it. It was basically just a bag of lukewarm water with a few ice cubes floating in it. We'll have to bob for beer now. It's all good. The ice is fine on form anyways, am I right? I guess. What's with all the long faces, huh? Turn those frowns upside down. This is the fun police and I'm here to out take you in for questioning. For up. Uh, harshing everyone's mellow. Doesn't the fun police work the other way around? The other way around what? Huh? Have another beer day. Come on, cheer up. Aren't you like graduating with honors or something? It's not like that. It's time to get wasted and we're studying until college, right? I could tell Dave was having a hard time after college was mentioned. She looked guilty. The silence got even louder, if that was even possible. Alright, alright, alright. I know we'll cheer you all up. What if I, Sir Robert of the Holy Grail? Do my famous keg stand just for you. Why was he looking at me? Keg stand? Yeah. This guy's got a keg stand, everyone. Brandon looked more out of it than usual, too. And as the known local stoner, I didn't think that was possible. And suddenly, a whole bunch of people were surrounding us. Probably half the party. It was becoming a scene. It was going on. When I felt someone tall behind me look up, I met Taylor's eyes. For some reason, having him there made me feel okay. While we were being crowded. Hey, Taylor. What's his face is gonna do a keg stare, right? Thanks for the support, Brandon. You know, I've always kind of considered you to be my hype man in a weird way. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. A hype man? Somebody gets the crowd all riled up and... Are you doing this, or...? Yeah, totally alright, everyone. Make way. Do you need someone to, like, hold your ankles or something? Hold his ankles? Oh, right. A keg stand is when someone does a handstand on a keg while they drink from it. That sounds awesome, right? So... It was just necessary to leave my man. Really? 
Back before, I mean, I always do my cake stands freestyle. Is this a good idea? Yeah, maybe. But everyone, ready? Yeah! Woo, go rubber! Holy shit, he's gonna do it! Alright, okay, just gotta get a good angle. You just do it, what's the hold up? Yeah, come on, you used to just do it. Don't think about it, just go. I can see Robert start to falter. I saw a look in his eyes I've never seen before. It was fear. Robert, Robert. Everyone cheered and cheered, but he just kept standing there, frozen in place. And eventually, the cheering just kind of died out, and it got really awkward. The crowd finally started to move out. When it was clear, nothing was going to happen. I could see Jessica still standing there, but Robert didn't seem to notice. In fact, he didn't seem to notice any of us still standing there. Robert? He wouldn't move. It was like he was frozen in that moment, still getting ready to do the keg stand. And yeah, what was that? You majorly wussed out. Hey, come on, Brandon. Whatever, you used to be so different. Then at that moment, Robert's, Robert muttered something about having to get something from inside. He just disappeared into the house. I felt terrible. I wanted to run after him, but then things got worse somehow. This keeps happening, bro! Brandon, what the hell, dude? What? So, now your little groupies are around you, you think you can call me out, man? What the- How much weed did you even smoke before you even got here? What does that matter, tall toe? I don't remember you having a problem when you were bumming my weed last year. That was back then. Yeah, back when you gave a shit. At least I thought you did. What are you even talking about? I don't know about how this used to be you and me. We get high, write songs about all the bullshit going on in the world, and... It wasn't me who stopped giving a shit, okay? But come on, you had plenty of chances to say something about it, but you just didn't care. Is this about the band, or...? You know what? Forget it. You don't need the band. You've got your own sound now. You wanna play that weird acoustic shit? Go right ahead, but I'm not getting up there tonight. So you're bailing on our gig? Not our gig anymore. Is this all because you wanna play one of your new songs I wrote? Just one song, come on. Whatever, see ya. I watched as Brandon and Taylor split up and I suddenly found myself alone again. At a party full of strangers that was supposed to be meant for me. I suppose I could have felt more sorry for myself, but the only thing I could think about was... What am I gonna do? I have to fix this. My friends, they needed me. As much as I wanted to be there for all of them, I just, I just couldn't. I felt like I was being pulled in every direction. They had Ingrid hovering around, Robert had disappeared, and Taylor... Looked over and saw Taylor pacing nervously all by himself. Brandon having long gone, leaving him high and dry. I remember Taylor saying how nervous he was playing live. How he needed Brandon to feel confident. Okay, I mean, you're gonna miss a, a big point, but yeah. Something inside me clicked. I realized what I wanted to do for Taylor. I wanted to be his rock and give him confidence to go up and perform. And at that moment, I also realized that it was always Taylor, all along. He was the one I drove home last, that first day we ran into each other again. He was the one that lent me his tapes for our history project at the beginning of the year. He's the one I dream about. That's right, we had that dream where he was Venus in the clamshell! <laughs> With the skeletons? He's the one I picked for the face of the little Ripper with. The one I almost kissed months ago in almost the ex this exact spot. And the one I chose to cheer up the most over the holidays. Taylor. Oh, hey, Stella. Taylor, about what happened back then? It's fine, really. Um... I want to encourage him, but I also don't want to dismiss his feelings. <laughs> um... I don't know. Uh, 
I want to tell him he worked hard. He still has a chance. I've seen how hard you work on your music. I can tell how much you care, and it's so obvious Brandon doesn't. Don't let him stop you from being the best you can be. I know that you can do this. You can go up there without him. You should know that even if you don't go through with it, you're still amazing and you don't have to, like, prove anything. Still it. Anyways, that's just something I wanted to say, so... I'm still going up, I think. Good choice, good choice. Really? Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, I was gonna go up anyways, but, um, thanks. What you said means a lot. Um, yeah, you know, I just thought you needed to hear it. Yeah, I did. We just stood there for a moment, smiling at each other. Well, I fantasized about him wrapping his big furry arms around me. Uh, I think I gotta go up there now. Hey, I'm right here watching. Yeah, cool. <laughs> After sound check, Taylor was ready. And by sound check, I mean him just tuning his guitar, really. There was only a few other people watching, mostly everyone else was distracted by the keg. But then he started. Dark hair, dark eyes, your smile pierces the night. Soft skin, pink lips, speak the truth, shine bright. <gasps> oh, it's an actual song! I've got a secret just between us. I've got a queen. I swear it's worth the fuss. I don't want to run, I don't want to hide. I want to touch the sun. I want to make you mine. Remember from before, when we were young and free, there was always something more. Don't you didn't see? When you came around, I was confused and weak. Heart beat so loud, I hardly speak. I wanted to run. I wanted to hide. I shied from the sun. Too scared you'd be mine. I think it's obvious. I think you can tell. It was always about us. I think you know well. It's been a long time coming. And my mind is made up. How to say something. It's time to face us I'm not gonna run I'm not gonna hide I'm not- I'm gonna touch the sun I'm gonna make you mine I couldn't believe it Was Taylor's song really about what I thought it was? The whole time I couldn't stop staring at him He looked so cool playing the guitar it's so much confidence. Like a side to him I'd never seen before, it just seemed right. Felt like he was singing just for me. But maybe that's how everyone in the audience felt. The song was just so personal. It could have just melted. Afterwards I'd shoot like no tomorrow and he was practically red from head to toe. He looked so embarrassed. Well, we just missed Taylor sing to us. I sang along. Like, actual song. Like, there was a little bit of voice acting there. Kinda cute. And the song is about us. No surprise. When he came down from the stage, he walked right up to me, smiling all over. I'm pretty sure I missed you. He was shining so bright, it was almost too hard to look at him. I could have just stayed in his ray forever. That was amazing. Did you hear the crowd was going wild? I'm pretty sure there was just you going wild. Nah, there are a few of us for sure. Okay, you and some random stone guy. And his friend, random stone girl. So that makes two teens and a skeleton. You laid me to rest already though. No more skeleton. 
<laughs> now I can be a fleshy girl. Okay, three people. Fine. <laughs> well, anyway. Three people isn't much of an audience. You know what? They say two's a couple, three's a crowd. I'm pretty sure it's two's company, three's a crowd. And usually they're talking about three being a crowd is a bad thing. Whatever. People are just too drunk to appreciate your talent right now, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm just glad I did it. I'm glad I was here for it. So. I've been meaning to show you something. Oh? You want to get out of here? Uh-huh. Big hands! Big hands! <laughs> Could stop beaming as we left the party together hand in hand. We walked all the way back to the campsite from Roberts. I didn't really know where we were going at first, but I just followed. Our fingers intertwined, looking down at our feet, saying nothing. And then we got to this clearing. <gasps> the trees are hugging! Oh, wait a minute. Look at how the bark pattern. We stop at these two willow trees. When I looked up at Taylor, questioningly, he wasn't smiling anymore. He looked pained. Taylor, what is this? Do you remember what I said about my parents? Ugh. How they left a while ago, right? Yeah. I've been meaning to tell you this forever now. And I feel like I owe you an explanation. This is where they went. Taylor, I don't understand. Bro, that's his parents! Then when we looked again at the trees, they looked kind of strange. Like two people hugging each other. And the thought occurred to me. A weird dark thought that I tried to shake away. That's why Bigfoot protect the forest. They're protecting their family, not just their home. And that's how we don't why we don't see them. They turn to trees. It doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense to me either. Taylor, are they are those trees? They made the decision to pass over three years ago. Pass over? My heart skipped a beat. They're they died? I didn't mean it to come out so harshly. Well, not really, but kind of. It's complicated. They decided to spend the rest of their time on Earth like this in the form of a willow tree. It's something Bigfoots do when they feel that there's nothing left for them here. In the world of sentient creatures, they, they become entirely one with nature by doing this. But... What about you? Taylor was silent for a while, and we just kind of stood there in silence. I wanted to reach out to Taylor, but I felt paralyzed. Years ago, before you and I were around, my parents broke off from all the Talto family and settled here in Label. They wanted to prove to themselves that a peaceful relationship could work between human and Bigfoots. It started with them stopping in Ladle for more and more. And when they did, they'd show some local hippies what they knew about nature. The more they did this, the more people would show up. Those hippies would bring their friends and families, and eventually it got to the point where my parents just stayed. Usually Bigfoots they keep to themselves, and apparently what they did pissed off the rest of their family. So my parents settled, they were basically excommunicated. My parents and the hippies formed a sort of commune for a while. I think your dad might have even been part of it. But eventually the province started meddling and money became an issue, so... Commune became the camp. All year they'd run courses that taught people about nature and had them exploring. For a while it was great. I mean, you saw it at its height. We had the high rope course, the climbing wall, the greenhouse, but... After a while, the hippies started to leave Ladle and only came for the summer. Not at all. We got harder and harder for my parents to maintain. We couldn't keep everything. We lost property to the town. Then courses began shutting down from lack of maintenance. 
not enough summer staff to keep running programs, and it was after all, you know, after I'd stopped coming. I can imagine how hard it was for Taylor to keep talking. He looked fragile. <gasps> oh my god, he's starting to cry! I saw the tears start to form in his eyes. I looked away, scared. I guess eventually all their failure and desperation got too much for them. It was like they couldn't, like, handle the shame. And they couldn't go back to their family. I think they felt like they were stuck. It was so hard being around them at that point. I had to do everything. Cook, clean, go to school, look after them. It's too much, and then when they... I know it sounds terrible, but when I left, I was glad. I thought maybe I even deserve it. Like, because I didn't help enough with the camp, or because I fought to live like a normal kid, going to school instead of homeschool, making human friends. I wasn't looking, but I could tell he was really crying now. I made so many excuses for them, even after they... But I'm sick of it, no more. I always blame myself for everything, my parents leaving me, my shitty grades, and I'm so angry. Despite everything that happened, I was ready. I wanted to follow them. Taylor. Watched his body shake with shame. I couldn't believe he would ever even consider it. And then Brandon, the band, basically saved me. It was a way I could just be angry. I took it all out on our music. I didn't give a shit what it sounded like. Brandon was what he wanted from the band. It worked. And even with the way he talked down to me, I didn't want to lose it. The band, the music. But this whole time, I was really just angry at, at them. At this point, he faltered. His fists unclenched. His shoulders slumped. Now he just looked hollow. It was the only way we could deal. And it worked until it did. And then you, you came back. I felt my face heat up. Maybe because I felt I didn't deserve this. Because I was finally starting to realize something that was just so obvious this whole entire time. I was ashamed I never noticed sooner. And then things changed. I wanted to make music. But different music. The kind that makes me feel something other than anger. And I wanted to share it with you. He finally turned to face me. His eyes bore right into mine and I had to look away. Killer, I. I don't deserve this. You, you helped me realize that. I can't just run away from the past. No, stop. I just reminded you of it. You did. But you also, like, gave me hope for the future. And now I'm just leaving again. It's not on you. It was never your fault, I know. But, but still, it sucks. Like, majorly. Yeah. I could practically hear the longing in his voice then. It made me feel all weak and I hated myself for it. How am I ever going to make it up to you? Stop, you don't have to make anything up to me. I should be the one. I'm the one who hurt you. Not even. I kept you in the dark for so long and I was... So uncool. I'm so sorry, Stella. <laughs> what? Look at us. Arguing about who's more in the wrong. Yeah. <sighs> I hadn't realized it until that moment, but my heart was beating really fast and I was all shaky. As if I had just watched a horrible accident. Without thinking, I reached for Taylor's hand to steady myself and he held on tight. It felt like he was rooting me back down to earth. But then it reminded me of the trees. Hey. Let's go somewhere else. Yeah. I've got the perfect spot. 
It's like you read my mind. The sun fully set. He led us to one of our favorite places from the old camp days. And that one is the little scooper. You mean the little dipper? Yep. <laughs> sure. You know the names I come up with are better. Whatever. <laughs> For silence. That felt the need to feel. Just to lift at least a little of the guilt that was feeling. I'm so sorry about everything, Taylor. Don't be. Even if it sucked, I'm glad things turned out this way. But why? Because now you're here. We said nothing for a while after that, letting the meaning of his words sink in. You know, I'm surprised. What? When I told everyone I'm moving, you took the news better than I thought you would. Hey, give me some credit. I'm not unreasonable. Besides, I kind of knew something like this would happen. I mean, it's the end of senior year. Everyone always splits then. Yeah, I guess. To be honest, I was kind of surprised I didn't feel as hopeless as I thought I would. Oh? Actually, I was kind of kicking myself for not spending as much time as I could have hanging with you. I started heating up again. <laughs> yeah! You know, I just thought to myself, time to get over your own shit and be honest with her. I eat. Wait. Honest about what? I could tell he was getting nervous. You're sitting pretty close, closer than usual. I could feel the fur on his arm tickling my arm and suddenly became super aware of it. I kept thinking about how much hand-holding we had done up until this point. And whether it would lead to more. Not the eyes! <laughs> well... You know my song from earlier. But yeah. You... You know what it was about, right? Yeah? Yup. My answer was practically came out like a squeak. Yeah. Could have been more obvious. T cool. So, did you like it? It was perfect. Oh. I guess it's the standard to beat now. <laughs> Taylor! Cool, cool. We were both smiling like goofs then. I really must have been sneakily inched closer because now his arm was practically around me. You know, I've been in love with you since like seventh grade. Right? I could feel his heart racing in his chest next to mine. Wow, I think so. I mean, I was never sure, but I guess I always kind of knew. I was babbling now. He leaned closer to me. I've been waiting for this. For a long time now. This is like... <laughs> That's not creepy, is it? Oh god, it is. I ruined it, haven't I? Just, just pretend I just say the fantasy part and we can get back to... I would totally do that. Still with him. Taylor. Stella! I think I'm saying my name like that was... Taylor? Stella. Taylor. His mouth was so warm and soft. Not what I expected at all. I think Taylor was, you know... You know what, forget whatever I was gonna say. I was kissing Taylor! Yeah, buddy! You guys win! Fucking finally! Congratulations! You won! Let me assign the points of the thing. You won! Congratulations! Congratulations! You won! Chicken pogs all around! You won! Congratulations! You won! Congratulations! This is fucking hilarious! You won! Congratulations! You won! You won! You won! Yeah! You won! Okay, prediction outcome! Yes! Choose outcome. Yes. <laughs> no one voted no, so you all get your points back. Okay, cool. I kind of started slow and timid, and then I got more passionate at the end. Yeah, big hype. Even used some tongue, I think. He was pretty good at it. Dude, my face is so red right now. Afterwards, my whole body felt like it was on fire. <laughs> 
was nice. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, want to do it again? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, double kissy. I didn't expect that. Maybe we, you all should get um, 20 points now. We kept making out for a little bit under the stars. And then, well, we didn't get much farther. But stuff happened. Let's just leave it to that. There's another episode. Okay, we'll do it next week. We'll do it next week. Damn, how... We'll do it next week. We'll finish this game and then start another game. Maybe we'll, we'll play this and then some Fall Guys next week. Because it is way past my bedtime. So, let's see who's live. It got hot and spicy, yeah. Like, damn, some tongue? That's my little dream right there. Yeah, I guess I guess we gotta go to the, the goodbye scene. That, that'll be pretty. You need that. Yeah, I can use a cold shower after that. Me too, I'm sweating. My face is red, I'm sweating. You definitely went over 20 minutes that you said you do. Yeah, dude, I had to, I had to keep going. I definitely had to keep going. I mean, we'll, we'll, next week we'll finish this last chapter and then play some Fall Guys afterwards. Um, let's see who's live. I don't know who's live. Um, ba -ba -ba. We did the kiss! Yeah, we did it for the kiss. I needed that kiss, dude. I needed it. Um, Jared's playing Fall Guys. We want to raid Jared. We haven't raided Jared in a while. I was hoping Maddie would be live so we could tell Maddie that we got the kiss. But, oh well. Um, yeah! So if you want to see the goodbye story, we'll be doing that next Wednesday. So... Tomorrow, I'm playing more Fall Guys. I love Fall Guys so much. It's my favorite thing in the whole freaking world. Um, so yeah, let's give some love. I'm gonna see who they're playing with. Just a second. I'm gonna be nosy. Let me be nosy. I'm kind of gonna be lying when they say so. Jer or Maddie? Oh, Maddie, yeah. I wanna see who they're playing with. And of course I get an ad. Um, who else? Wait, there's just one person here who's playing a dating game. Because I thought about sending it over to another dating game. Glad I can see the kiss tonight since I'll be in Kelly next week. Fuck yeah. Um, there is someone I could raid also. I don't, I don't think I've been to their stream before. I'm just trying to see who she was playing with. I get double ads, so. Anyway. Um, yeah, let's right off. Tomorrow we'll be playing some Fall Guys. I'm excited. You're excited. We love Fall Guys. It's great. And, yeah! Fall Guys! So we'll play this again next Wednesday. So, if you did not hear it yet today, please remember that I love you! Bye! Thank you!